This week, we're recapping all the news and announcements we got at Celebration 2022 and talking spoilers for the first three episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. The date is June 4th, 2022, and you're listening to episode 64 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast, episode 64. Uh, We have got a massive show for you this week. Uh, Joining me uh, this episode, Usuf wasn't able to join me, but uh, to make up for his loss, uh, which is really hard to fill, uh, I've got two very special guests with me. You guys know them and love them. Uh, First off, I've got J.G. Kars from the Marvel cast. What's going on, brother? Uh, It's going pretty well. I'm pretty exhausted, but uh, for very good reasons. Very yeah no I'm jealous I I know the reasons and and it's you know and for those of you that don't know JG was at Star Wars Celebration this year uh, he was the only one out of all of us that was able to make it and uh, he got to see some stuff and things that we didn't really get to see uh, hopefully he will enlighten some of us as to some of his experiences this episode we were just talking before we started recording and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing guy because I didn't know you got to watch one of the episodes of Tales of the Jedi. So I'm excited to hear your, your thoughts on that. Uh, and also joining us is another very special guest. All the way from Texas is Mr. Nick Albers. What's going on, brother? Brian, JG, thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries, man. It's, it's good to get you on again. It's been a while since we've got you on. So uh, and, and because of what we're talking about this episode, I wanted to get as many guys on as I could this week. Uh, this week, we are doing a full recap of the Star Wars Celebration 2022 uh, festivities, all the announcements that came out uh, during last weekend's uh, non-streamed panels. Uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the first three episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I know is the reason Nick wanted to join in on this particular episode. Uh, so before we get into all of that, uh, I wanted to let you guys know this is going to be the last episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast before my hiatus for Harvest. For those of you that don't know, I explain it every year. Uh, for for those of you who are new to the Star Wars Canon Podcast to 1138 Productions, I have to take a hiatus uh, every year in June for a couple, two, three, four weeks once in a while. Uh, I work at a grain elevator for my day job and wheat harvest is upon us, so I'm going to have to uh, dip out for a little while and uh, go work in the grain elevator for a while. So uh, this will be the last episode before that hiatus. 1138 gaming is already on hiatus uh, until we come back. Uh, but I, we're, we're going to come back strong because I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, what the rest of the year has to offer in, in the terms of Star Wars, in the name of Star Wars, really. So uh, I wanted to let you guys know this will be the last episode before then. But we're going out with a bang. We've got a massive episode for you guys. Uh, make sure to check out 1138productions.com. You guys can check out this podcast. Uh, you can check out a little show called The Marvel Cast, which, JG, I'm sure you would appreciate if everybody would check out. They're doing a great job over there, uh, keeping everybody up to date on all the Marvel news. Uh, there uh, on the website as well, you guys can find timelines. It's not just Star Wars. You can find a Halo timeline on there that we've put together. Uh, both Star Wars timelines also, Canon and Legends, are on there. Uh, and then... Usuf and I are working on an Assassin's Creed one right now. We're going to try to get that up there as well uh, and, and throw some more timelines together uh, for you guys there. 1138 Gaming uh, can be seen on that website as well. There's also a link to our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash 1138productions. On that page, you can find uh, full reactions to Book of Boba Fett. Uh, my father-in-law and I sat down and watched the first three episodes of Obi-Wan. You can find our reactions to that on there as well. And uh, for those of you who aren't necessarily wanting to donate or support, that's fine. There's some free content on there for you as well. It is m- my full reaction to the uh, to the Star Wars Holiday Special uh, that Lucas wants all of us to forget. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, wasn't George Lucas quoted in saying if he had the time and a baseball bat, he'd hunt down every single copy of it and destroy every single copy? I'm pretty sure is was the actual quote. So, uh 
you guys can find that all there on patreon.com slash 1138productions. Uh, before we get into uh, canon material, one last announcement. On November 11th this year, uh, that is Veterans Day in the United States, uh, I'm going to be sitting down and doing a 24-hour live stream uh, of just, I guess, all content. We're going to be gaming, talking Star Wars, talking about anything you guys want to talk about. Uh, and during that stream, we're going to be taking donations uh, and, and PayPal uh, donations, Super Chats, and all of those donations are going to be going towards uh, raising awareness and combating uh, veteran suicide. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Mark your calendars for November 11th. We're going to be giving away some Star Wars canon novels during that time. Uh, for uh, for those of you who donate over a certain amount, really looking forward to it and uh, cannot wait uh, to see how that's going to go. We're probably going to start it. It's a, That's a Friday night, so we're probably going to start it uh, about 7 p.m., go all night, and then go all day. That way when I'm done, uh, for my sanity, at 7 o'clock p.m., I can just go to bed and uh, crash for Saturday night. So uh, make sure to mark your calendars. Really looking forward to it. We're trying to get the ball rolling now on letting everybody know about it. And uh, going forward from there. Also, I wanted to give a, a, a huge thank you to all of you who tuned in for last, not last week's episode. We didn't do an episode last week. But the last episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast, you guys made a, a huge success. Well over 800 views on YouTube, which was ridiculously cool. So everybody that tuned in on the last episode, I want to thank you guys for making that episode such a huge success. And uh, uh, hopefully we can do the same thing with this one. I really do. So, guys, let's get into some new canon stuff. Nick said he was going to be quiet for this because he's not a big book or comic book guy. Uh, but, JG, I know you are. Uh, so, new canon available this week, and we're going to be talking about this here in a little bit. Obi-Wan Kenobi Parts 1 through 3 are now streaming on Disney+. Plus. We got Darth Vader number 23 from Marvel on June 1st. And also on June 1st, we got Bounty Hunters number 23. Uh, JG, uh, what are you thinking of this Darth Vader run so far? Oh, it's been it's been incredible. It's been really good. Like for some reason, like every time we get like around to a new Darth Vader comic, I'm like, oh, we don't need another Darth Vader story. But then we start going, and here we are. I'm loving it and enjoying it. I haven't read this week's yet. Uh, you know, I've been choosing sleep, but <laughs> I'm excited to dive into it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and Bounty Hunters, you know, Bounty Hunters is one that I was really looking forward to, and with an exception of the War of the Bounty Hunter story arc, it's been a little bit of a letdown for me, just personally. Um, I really like Valance as a character, though. He is my absolute favorite bounty hunter out of all of them. But uh, that War of the Bounty Hunters run, it really, it I think it saved bounty hunters. So uh, those are available now. Upcoming this uh, next week, Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 4 is going to be premiering on Wednesday. And uh, on, I think, Tuesday. Is Tuesday New Comic Day or is it Wednesday? I think it is Wednesday, Wednesday isn't it? Yeah, Star Wars number 24 on June 8th. So uh, those will be uh, next week's upcoming canon. Uh, let's get into the news, guys. This is the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about tonight. The Celebration 2022 recap. Uh, we have a lot of announcements, a lot of trailers that not everybody got to see, a lot of content that not a lot of people got to see, and uh, there's there's a lot to go through. So let's, let's work our way through this one little bit at a time and uh, unpack it and 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 go on from there. So first thing I wanted to talk about, the Andor teaser trailer finally aired that was the very first thing they really led with at celebration was the andor teaser trailer uh the release date for this series is going to be august 31st for the first two episodes i do believe is what they said uh really looking forward to this and this is a series i think a lot of people are sleeping on to be completely honest and it's one that you guys have heard me say this for the longest time this is one i'm really looking forward to to see that gray area of the rebel alliance uh nick what do you think man uh, Brian, you pretty much hit it right on the head. Um, when when they first announced this, gosh, that seemed like a lifetime ago uh, in 2020. It does, yeah. I, I was thinking of, about it at the time. I was like, you know what? Do, do we really need to know about Andor? And I mean, what what type of story are they going to do? And just watching it, and I I know I've talk to you about it and talk to everybody else in the in the group about it it's like you know the reason why i think rogue one is especially loved and beloved in the veteran community which i i'm a member of and i know you are is it's it it really hits you know 
the ground running and it's more about you know the everyday person not the not the heroes and just seeing you know the first couple scenes and it's like it blew my mind because you got to see the uh clone uh transports coming in again like they were about ready to go on an attack and i was i just started freaking out it's like oh my god and i know we were talking about it uh before the show and in the days leading up about who we can all possibly see in this series and i know they've mentioned that it's going to be a two two at least two seasons so mm-hmm. i'm really looking forward to um you know how this is going to play out and you know in the run-up to essentially take us right into Rogue One. Yeah, they uh, they did drop that bomb. Uh, was it at Celebration they said that it was going to be 24 episodes? It's going to be 24 episodes total is what they've got uh, lined up to, 12-episode seasons. And they said season two was going to run right up to Rogue One. It was going to lead right up to that movie and just hit the ground running, I guess, uh, you know, from, from then on. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed the trailer a lot, you know, and then... Uh, the only thing I could think of, is, you know, when the trailer starts and you see this guy walk up to this big bell and he's all ceremonial and he starts banging on the bell, all I can think of as a toddler at 3 a.m. He's just like, yep, time to get up, guys, and just start banging on everything. And and so it, I'm looking forward to this one a lot. You know, you didn't see a whole lot of Andor in that trailer, uh, but we got to see, like, the Imperial Senate, you know, and, and, and all this other. So uh, I'm looking forward to it uh, quite a bit. J.G.? Yeah, Andor, so Cassian's actually the favorite thing about the movie Rogue One. I walked out of the theater saying I wanted more of that character. And so when they made this announcement, I think I was probably one of the few that was probably screaming in excitement with this announcement because this character has so many layers and I'm excited for us to really dive into that more. But also with what they've been talking about with the fact that it's going to have kind of like two storylines going. We're going to see the story from Cassian's perspective. And then we're also going to focus on Mon Mothma and her, and her story, and it's going to f- intersect towards the end. So I'm really excited to see more of her as well because she's another character that's been up until now pretty underutilized in how important she is for Star Wars. And so I'm curious to see how they're able to really do that well, especially for a show um, that is called Andor. Um, if they're <laughs> dedicating at least half of the story to her, I, I'm curious to see if they can actually pull it off. It, remind me, uh, it, wasn't it in Rebels when Mon Mothma finally came out and said, I'm part of the Rebel Alliance? And because she was still, a, I mean, she was obviously still a member of the Imperial Senate. So yeah. this is going to be, I mean, this would be after that, wouldn't it? Because this is two years before uh, Rogue One. And so Rebels was what, four or five years? So this will be after she's made that announcement. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how she's accepted in the Imperial Senate after that and how people react towards her and look at her. Because I mean, they're, they're painting the Rebel Alliance as the terrorist organization of the galaxy, and she's a terrorist leader, still a member of the Imperial Senate. Like, It's going to be interesting to see how that how that dynamic works. So, uh, yeah, I, like you said, I was already looking forward to the Andor aspect of it. But now we're going to have this this Senate aspect of it, Mon Mothma side of things, that's really going to to build it out, and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, definitely looking forward to Andor. Any other thoughts on Andor before we move on to uh, Bad Batch? No? All right. So Bad Batch Season 2, we finally got the trailer for that as well. Andor release date, September 28th. Uh, this is one that I the, – the trailer was cool. It was a lot of quick shots. JG, I think you saw a different trailer than we did. Yeah, and it, it just really was really confusing because there's that shot which we'll talk about at the for me it was at the end, and so then I was like asking everybody like oh like did you guys see that crazy end shot They're like what end shot, but then for the trailer that was on YouTube it was in the beginning of the trailer so I was really confused. The, was it the Palpatine shot? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. And didn't you say something? You saw something about Omega facing Palpatine, or was I? Was, yeah. Did I read that wrong? Yeah. So like in in the trailer that's on YouTube it cuts it pretty short like that scene with the palpatine like you see omega's kind of like hiding but in the trailer that we saw it almost looks like like she's like standing up and almost like she is facing the emperor oh my god that's freaking awesome uh i'm i'm looking forward to this season a lot the the first season was a huge cliffhanger uh they they found mount tannis it was Mount Tannis from Legends, which we all know is the big... Well, I guess we don't all know. It's the big cloning facility that Palpatine used in Legends. 
And uh, it's it's awesome that they're really starting to focus on this cloning aspect. Uh, you know, we got a tease of it in Mandalorian also in season two with the, the vats they found with the disfigured clones in it and, and, and everything like that. So I'm anxious to see if they're going to continue that storyline and move that forward as well. The trailer looked awesome. Nick, what did you think about the trailer, man? Um, so I watched it right before we came on. Um, and I actually watched it during celebration and, um, Y'all know, um, most of y'all know, like in the group, um, everything that I w- wound up going through last year. Mm. And I pretty much, at one point, in t- I was, I think I had about four or five episodes of The Bad Batch left, and I just stopped watching it. And watching this trailer made me realize, huh, I have to go back and watch that entire season now and just run up to it. Um, and actually be in a better frame of mind to watch it. And the, the one thing I was actually impressed by, because I actually have a still shot of it up right now, um, I don't know if any of, uh, any of y'all ever played the old Xbox game, Republic Commando. Yes. That, I, I saw some of the shots of it, and it's like, oh my God. I, and I'm really loving how they're they're bringing some of that aspect into it too. And I was like, huh, maybe we'll get some, you know, call outs to Republic Commando and um, and things like that. I'm actually really looking forward to this. Um, I love the fact that you know, Filoni and Favreau just seem to have their hands in everything right now, and they're they're beginning to cross a lot of things into different aspects of the shows. I mean, you have, um, and we'll get about it later, you know, about Quinlan Boss, you know, in Obi-Wan and, you know, and how he played a part in the Clone Wars and the, the Bad Batch and, you know, uh, Saw Guerrero, who started in the Clone Wars. Um, maybe we'll see him in season two of the Bad Batch. And then we he's, played a uh, important part in Jedi Fallen Order. And then, you know, and then he was in Rebels and Rogue One. So I'm really loving how Star Star Wars is finally getting their feet under them. And Bad Batch seems to be taking that too. And just everything's starting to merge together into one uh, con- uh, continuous story arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I was sitting in the studio the other day with my father-in-law, and we brought up uh, the Kathleen Kennedy announcement from 2020, December 2020, the investors' call, when she was announcing all of these new shows and and everything like that. And to to basically reiterate that she did indeed say that all these shows are going to collide into one massive crossover event. And, you know, it's a lot of the Filoniverse stuff, but even Bad Batch is dropping hints, I think, at some of this stuff. And, And they're... You know, we I talked about it on the last episode. We we finally have a roadmap for Star Wars. They're finally making a plan on where they want to go, and they're not rushing to get there. They're taking their time and planting these seeds, and this is the way it needs to be done, you know. And well, like you said, Nick, they, they, they're finally getting their feet underneath them and, and doing this the right way, and I think they're finally starting to listen to everybody. And, you know, with Bad Batch, that was a show I know a lot of people were like, why do we need this show? You know, why why are you doing a show based off of – four clones, five clones that just had a couple, you know, one small arc in season seven of Clone Wars. Why, why are you doing that? And in Filoni, we trust, right? That's, that's the big thing in Filoni, we trust. So there's a reason this story is getting told. There's a reason the story is important to everything going on. Uh, and, and I, it's, it's going to be great, man. It, it, it just, we gotta, we gotta bite our time, be patient and just wait and see how this is all going to cross over. And what what worries me, though, is once this big crossover happens, then what's the plan for Star Wars TV? You know what I mean? What, are they going to do another big build-up to another big crossover? What's what's going to be the plan? So uh, Bad Batch Season 2 trailer is finally out. Looks awesome. Release date is September 28th, uh, which is coming. It'll be here before we know it. I, that's That'll be, the, what, the next series after She-Hulk? Is that right? Or that'll be after Andor also. It's going to stream with Andor. Okay. Oh, they're going to stream simultaneously. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Looking forward to that. So uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, Mandalorian Season 3. JG, you got to see the Season 3 trailer. 
Uh, we have yet to see it. Uh, I well, I, I see it officially. Seen a grainy, <laughs> grainy version of it, uh, which seems to be the uh, the theme for this week's episode. But the release date is going to be February twenty twenty three. Uh, season three trailer, JG, tell us a little bit about what you saw during that trailer. <laughs> oh man. Um, man, it's, it's hard. Cause like, it's like, feels like all a blur. So I will do the best I can for y'all. Um, lots of Bo-Katan. So if you've been wanting more Bo-Katan, she is very pivotal to this season. I think as a lot of us have thought, um, obviously lots of Grogu, uh, also lots of Mandalore. So, you know, we've been, you know, talking about how he has to go back and get cleansed, and that is the theme of the season. And uh, you see, one of the final shots that they show us is um, like a zoom in onto the planet of uh, of Mandalore, and it's all just like wrecked. It's like just destroyed, and it's just it's it just gives you chills. Like we things that we've imagined and things that we've seen a little bit in animation. I know we saw a think uh, we saw that in the Book of Boba Fett a little bit. Um, the actual fire and destruction and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but now just seeing the actual aftermath, it is just epic. And there's so many like quick shots of little things that you wouldn't expect. Um, I think we saw Babu Frick um, and some more of his little species. Uh, so that was a surprise. Um, everyone said, hey, though, so we all love that. Um, those are the big takeaways. I'm try- I can't really remember anything else, but definitely I think the big takeaway really is Bo-Katan is on a mission to get the dark saber and and to roll the Mandalore and to rebuild it and Din is on his way to redeem himself to become a Mandalorian again. Oh, Bo's pissed. Bo is pissed at oh. this point. And and you could see I went back cuz I recently I went back and rewatched the finale of season 2 Mandalore the Mandalorian. Who wouldn't? It was one of the greatest season finales I've ever seen of anything. And when she realizes that he's walking in holding that dark saber you can see she doesn't move, she doesn't twitch, you know, but you can see the rage in her face that now Din Djarin has got this dark saber and it's supposed to be hers. That was the whole plan was her to get that weapon, and now she's back in Mandalore and and wanting this thing. It, it's it's going to be awesome. I'm hoping that she is the villain of this season. And I'm from, that and too. from what I've heard, that's kind of the direction we're going. Moff Gideon is gone at this point. Uh, he's because we even got a mention of him in Book of Boba Fett. He's with the New Republic. He's waiting tribunal, you know, and and so I think Bo Katan is an awesome villain. I think that's going to be a really cool dynamic to see her in. Nick, what do you think? Well, um, I'm rather jealous of JG, but I mean, oh, you and me both, brother. (laughs) Who wouldn't be? Um, you know, I was really anticipating you know starting season three of the mandalorian around christmas time because you know for a lot of us the last few years that's that's what we did we watched star you know we watched the star wars shows around the holidays and you know my son absolutely loves that but now i have to wait i was telling everybody in the group it's like man i have to wait till february this is a bunch of anyways (laughs) um but I guess where I'm going with it is I'm going back to the book of Boba Fett in a ways because it that that season that, that the first season of the book of Boba Fett did not pick up unfortunately until didn't showed back up with Grogu and everything and then essentially it became uh, the Mandalorian season 2.5 mm-hmm. uh, which I'm not complaining I'm pretty sure a lot of people aren't complaining about that but like what jg said i I think it it gave us a direction in which din had to go in order to become um to reclaim you know his title as a mandalore again and i don't where i think everybody's I understand what you guys are saying in terms of Bo being maybe the enemy or the antagonist of the series. I would say she might not really be an antagonist, more of a, a political and a political opponent of Din, because mm-hmm. she, you know, rightfully has some legit claim. You know, going all the way back to Cold oh War yeah, oh yeah, and everything. So um, I think. 
you know, she and him are going to cross paths and they're going to have to figure out essentially what, you know, who's going to rightfully rule Mandalore. Right. So. Yeah, no, and, and, you know, I remember when, uh, what was it, season two when Moff Gideon says, you know, you can't just give it to her. She has to earn it, you know, and, and we all had this, this thought we're like, well, wait a second. How did she get it in Rebels? Sabine just handed it over to her in Rebels, and she took it and ruled Mandalore. And then in Book of Boba Fett, when we see the armor again, she starts talking about the tale of Bo-Katan and how it was already given to her once. It was gifted to her the first time, you know, and, and not to be done a second time. So uh, I think we're going to see a side of Bo-Katan. She's going for what she wants. She wants that dark saber, and she's willing to do whatever she has to do to get it. And what's weird is I feel like, like you were saying, Nick, she's going to be the protagonist. I'm sorry, the antagonist against Mandalore, uh, Dinjarin's protagonist. And what's weird is their goals line up almost perfectly and they're still going to end up butting heads. Like it's, it's, I'm interested to see how they're going to do it. And, and, you know, we also found out that John Favreau has already started writing season four of Mandalorian. So there's, there's so much that, is coming down the pipeline with this and we already there's there's so many ways it could go. I'm I'm looking forward to this. And you know, they they had Katie Sackhoff on uh the celebration stage and she was talking about how she cornered Dave Filoni and was like, My character's still alive, can we do something with her? You know, and, and he brought her back in a huge way. So uh really looking forward to Mandalorian season three also. Uh another announcement that kind of took us by surprise was Skeleton Crew. Uh, starring Jude Law. Release date for that is 2023. Uh, this was the show that John Watts is doing, I believe. Uh, and honestly, uh, this show is giving me massive uh, Space Cases vibes. I don't know if anybody out there remembers Space Cases. It was an old Nickelodeon TV show in the 90s of these kids from different planets that hopped on this alien spaceship, took off uh, into space. In it. And it's kind of giving me the same kind of vibes from what I'm hearing. So, uh, JG, did they show you any? Thing. Did they show you guys anything at all for Skeleton Crew or or anything? No, no. so this was interesting because um, I was at a booth helping out some people that I help out with, and um, I just we just saw this drop out of nowhere. So I think this was something that they might have shown on the live stream and they announced at the stage because this wasn't – oh, wait, no, they did announce it at the first panel. This was at the first panel, excuse me, um, but they didn't show anything. They just brought John Watts out, which was something that even Steve and I had been speculating because there was talks about – there's been talks about the show for a while. And then all of a sudden recently there's been talks that John Watts is attached because as of recently, John Watts has uh, stepped back from doing the Fantastic Four movie on the Marvel side of things. So there's been a lot of things and a lot of things heating up leading to this. And so this was more just confirmation. It kind of gives me a little more Stranger Things vibes because um, uh, they very were strong to emphasize that it's a show that has kids in it but it's not a show for kids necessarily. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty excited for to see, you know, maybe something a little darker, maybe, you know. Um, Star Wars hasn't really done that much yet, well, except for maybe this past week. But, yeah, I'm excited. Fair enough. Well, they said it was going to be a bunch of kids that took off in a galaxy in a starship that they find, and I'm guessing yeah. Jude Law is going to end up playing probably their guardian, their chaperone. I don't know. Um but to get, to get talent like Jude Law into Star Wars, this is wicked awesome. This is absolutely cool. Uh, Nick, out of everything you've heard about this show so far, uh, is this one you're looking forward to checking out? If it has Star Wars attached to it and it's uh, live action or animated, um, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. I mean, I really will. And, you know... Who doesn't like Jude Law? I mean, he is one of the, you know, he's one of the more underrated actors in Hollywood out there. And one of the things I kind of heard that was going to be, you know, they, they said, imagine Goonies in space. And, you know, as a child of the 80s and as a child who loved the Goonies, I'm, I'm all for that. Let's Let's see. Let's see them go hunting uh, one-eyed Willie's uh, treasure in space, or whoever <laughs> the version of the one-eyed Will, uh, Willie pirate is in space. 
you, I, I didn't know about the, the Goonies <laughs> thing. Uh, Kirsty is a huge Goonies fan, huge Goonies fan, and so that I'm, I'm gonna have to go when we're done recording. I'm gonna have to go tell her that there has been the the similarity made between the two. And uh, th- this is one, you know, because we'd heard rumors right before Celebration that there was uh, another show in the in the works. I take rumors with a huge grain of salt nowadays um, and, and try not to listen to anything until there's a hard reports coming out. And, and an announcement at Celebration is about as hard as a report as you can get. And so seeing what this is and that they got such good talent attached to it, I'm really excited for it. Uh, and like I said, the release date for that is just sometime in 2023. Uh, they haven't given us a date yet, but there's a lot coming out in 2023. It's going to be a massive year next year for Star Wars, leading up to having another film in theaters at the end of the year. So uh, looking forward to Skeleton Crew. Uh, next on the list, we're not even halfway through the list of stuff to talk about out of Celebration yet. Next on the list is another one I'm jealous of, J.G., uh, because he got to watch the first, what, probably the first episode of this, the Tales first of the episode. Jedi. Uh Tales of the Jedi was finally f- uh, officially announced. This is one that has been rumored for a while after seeing the logo on a Christmas gift for Lucasfilm. I think they got record players. I think the last time I talked about it, I thought it was a jacket, but it's a record player that they got, and it had this logo on it. And we were all like, what? What is Tales of the Jedi? And we started thinking legend stuff and, and you know, and, and Exar Kun kind of stuff again, you know. Uh, now we know that Tales of the Jedi is... Uh, coming it's an animated anthology is it going to be six episodes i think is that what they, they said it's going to end up being uh yep, six episodes six episodes three of them focused on dooku and qui-gon the other three focused on ahsoka is that correct too if i'm not mistaken correct. okay so i was making sure i read that right uh and it looks like it's going to be in the style the animation style of clone wars and so i'm looking at this as an extension mini series of clone wars i guess to kind of beef it up a little bit jg you got to watch the first episode of this uh, without spoilers, no spoilers, because we some of us want to go into this blind. Uh, yes. What what were your takeaways from seeing the first episode? How long was it, and uh, and, you know, and kind of what was the the tone of it a little bit? Yeah. So first, I'll just say um, it's very much. Dave talked about it. It was he was kind of jealous because as much as he is an executive producer for Bad Batch, he is very much hands off. He is basically as. Uh, George Lucas handed the keys off to him. He's now handed on to new people. Um, and so he was kind of jealous and he saw how great Bad Batch is looking and he wanted to play in it. And so then he had talked about wanting to tell some stories and such. And um, one of the other uh, people in Lucasfilm, Carrie Beck, uh, said, if I could find you money, will you do this? And well, she found him money. And so he got <laughs> to do these. Um, and so it is It is stunning. It is beautiful. They showed us the full trailer that will they did say will come out eventually here shortly. Um, so hopefully pretty soon because it's going to come out in the fall. Uh, and they showed us a full first episode. Uh, the episode they did show us was quite light and pleasant. Um, it wasn't an Ahsoka episode. And I do think one of the gripes I saw uh, from, uh, from other people, I know a couple people texted me, they're like, what? More Ahsoka? We've already gotten Ahsoka. Like, like I had two people personally text me that. And I was like, y'all, y'all are not ready for this. Like, this this story needs told. Um, and the other two stories they teased in the trailer. Um, and it does sound like, from what Dave was talking about, because he was like, oh, y'all are clapping now? Just wait till you see the Dooku stuff. You're not going to be clapping. You're going to be crying. You're going to be <laughs> mad. You're going to be in pain. Um, I think that it's going to be really dark. Like, really, really dark. Like, even though this is in the animation of Clone Wars and Bad Batch, I think that they're, they're they're not holding back with the Dooku stuff. Um, I also do think some of the Ahsoka stuff could get pretty dark. Uh, but I think people should go into this. Just take it as new stories. You know, we're getting, uh, even though they're about, it was about 15 minutes long. So I'm assuming they're all going to be about that length. Um, you know, we're all going to want more. You know, we're going to want that full 30 minutes. Take it for what it is. And, and these are things that Dave personally worked on. And I do think if it's successful, I think there's room for them to keep this pattern up with like a second season with two other Jedi. So nice. I'm I'm looking forward to the Dooku stuff. Um, not too long ago, we had a mailbag question on the podcast asking about Dooku and and saying that the book was the in the on the audio drama was kind of short and it kind of skipped over some parts of his life that that maybe we wanted to see a little bit. You know what I mean? So I and and we've never actually gotten the canon story on why he turned we've gotten very close to it we've gotten very close but we've never actually gotten the story 
And so this is something I'm looking forward to. And and, and especially young Qui-Gon. We're getting more Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, and Liam Neeson coming back to voice him. Is that correct also? And, and his son, yeah. And his son. That That's cool, keeping it in the family like that. That's really cool. Uh, in the animation style of the Clone Wars, which seems to be a fan favorite. Uh, and, and, you know, even with Season 7 of Clone Wars, Bad Batch, these shows are so cinematically beautiful. It's like, it's just, they... When when we when season seven of Clone Wars came out, Kirsty and I went back and rewatched all of Clone Wars, and that's why we were got to the game late with season seven. We were still in the middle of our rewatch, and some of the things we noticed, you know, there's there's certain aspects that make something look very realistic, and it's like depth of field stuff. You know what I mean? And the first few seasons of Clone Wars didn't have depth of field. It was just it was animated. That's what it was, and then. When you get into these cinematic versions now of, like, Season 7 of Clone Wars and Bad Batch, you know, and, and like, Clone Wars, where they're doing motion capture for the lightsaber battles, that that is so gorgeous. It looks so good. And to see that coming in for Tales of the Jedi and for another season of Bad Batch, uh, they're, they're really putting everything they've got into these shows, and it shows what they're actually capable of. Uh, I definitely think they've abandoned the whole Rebels animation style, definitely abandoned the Resistance animation style, uh, I think that was a big, that was a big red flag where they were like, "Oh, we're not going to do that again." So going back to the well and what they know everybody loves, I think that's great. And and I don't know what these stories are going to be. Obviously, one of them's going to be the fall of Dooku. And from what, because I saw a very grainy trailer of <laughs> Dooku, and some of the shots that I saw in that trailer, you know, Dooku force choking, you know, and Qui Gon's like, "Stop! What are you doing?" You know, and we're gonna finally see that turn. There's, I will also say, um, I won't say it so that whenever you do get to see the trailer, y'all are surprised. Um, these aren't the only familiar characters that you're going to see. There are, especially from what we can see on the Dooku side of things, I'm assuming we'll see some, oh yeah, we definitely did on the Ahsoka side. But definitely, there's a lot of, there's a lot of supporting cast that go along with it. And also, uh, Janina Gavankar is back to voice a new character in the Ahsoka episode. So Really? I did not know that. I yes, didn't know she They herself. actually brought her on stage and she talked to Dave and it was... Uh, she is she's one of the biggest fans like she was so oh, she's excited. a huge nerd yeah probably talked a little too much that Dave probably wanted but it was fun <laughs> look uh, out for her you'll you'll easily catch it in the first uh, Ahsoka episode she she is awesome as a Star Wars fan and, and for those of you that don't know that's Iden Versio from Battlefront and Inferno Squad uh that's cool that they brought her back as a voice actor as well that's that's pretty cool Nick you're hearing all this uh and and, and I know you're a big Clone Wars fan and uh, what are you, what are your thoughts on this? So, when I initially thought, like everybody thought, when the initial thing came out of Tales of the Jedi, it's like, yes, this is finally we're, we're finally getting going all the way back and getting origins of the Jedi or the rise and fall of the Sith Empire. But then, uh, I will freely admit that when I found out we were getting three more episodes of Ahsoka, I was I was a bit miffed about that for a little <laughs> bit. And, it, and part, part of the reason was, you know, we had her, she, she, we had her pretty much all throughout the Clone Wars. We had her for bits and pieces in Rebels. And she showed up in Mandalorian. And now she's getting her own se- uh, series. And I was like, I was like, look, you know, I get it. Uh, uh, and I think a lot of people fail to remember this, but when the Clone Wars movie originally came out... It was so bad. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, I, I, I actually liked it. Did you? That's, <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Because, uh, oh, okay, now we're getting sidetracked. But um, <laughs> part, part, part of the reason I liked it is, you know what? Uh, 2005 came out and was Revenge of the Sith, and that was it. And it's like, we're yeah. not, never getting any more Star Wars. And then I got Star Wars. And then, um, so, but where I was going with this is a lot of people hated Ahsoka. They oh, I did. Hated, yeah. They hated Ashley Eckstein. And if you actually just read what, um, Lucas was telling Filoni as they were developing the Clone Wars. And if you really watch it, the Clone Wars in a lot of ways is seen through the eyes of Ahsoka growing Mm -hmm. up. And so to me, 
you know, yeah, w would I prefer another Jedi? Sure. But guess what? This is Filoni's, Filoni's baby, who is the main character that everybody associates Dave Filoni with, Ahsoka Tano. So I, I don't hate it. So a after I got that, it's like, you know what? Like you said, in Filoni, we trust. Um, in terms of the Count Dooku stuff, as soon as I heard they were bringing back um, Qui-Gon Jinn and his son, I'm mean, not Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, Liam Neeson. He I'm is Qui-Gon, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> but as soon as I heard that, I was like, man, uh, I, I'm all in to see, you know, at least that side. And like you said, I, I want to see what made him leave the, the Jedi Order because something had to force him to leave. Right. Yeah, and we, we, like I said, we got a little bit of that in the uh, Dooku audio drama. There were bits and pieces there that that you could start to see pushing him that direction and, and uh, you know, how he found out who he was and what planet he was from and what nobility, about his nobility and everything like that. Uh, I, and I'm hoping to see some aspects of that Dooku Jedi lost brought into uh, brought into this, this Tales of the Jedi. So... Uh, really looking forward to this series. Uh, it's coming out this year, fall of 2022. We haven't got an official release date yet, I don't think. Uh, but it's it's coming out, man. We've got a lot of Star Wars stuff coming. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is one that I'm I'm really I'm over the moon about because this is another one that I saw a very gritty teaser trailer for, and as soon as I saw it, I screamed. I you can ask Kirsty. I literally screamed at the top of my lungs when this trailer came out. Uh. Ahsoka, uh, it's only been filming for two weeks, and it are, and they already put together a teaser trailer for you guys. I'm truly jealous of you, JG, uh, because you got to see in high def basically what I had to squint and then realize what I was looking at. This teaser trailer, it, it's obviously off the internet now. I'm sure Disney scoured it for every trace of it and just obliterated it. Uh, the release date for Ahsoka is 2023. Uh, Nick, real quick before we start talking about this, did you get to see the teaser trailer at all? Oh, you're muted, buddy. Nope, still can't hear him. Can there we go. Yes, sir, now we can hear you. Third time's the charm. No, I did not. And, but, okay. Um, you know reading JG's reactions last week about it. So uh, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, the From what JG mentioned earlier in the podcast, I think, I, you know, in a lot of ways that brought me back into Star Wars because of my kids. And so I'm really looking forward to what this series has to bring. And you know, all the screenshots that, you know, official Disney and <laughs> Star Wars and everything put out. I'm like, okay, it's a, it's another one of those in Filoni we trust. And, you know, this is Filoni, this is Filoni's character. So, you know, you know full well Filoni is going to make sure we get a amazing story out of this. Uh, okay, so JG got to see this trailer. I've seen a, a grainy version of it. Uh, JG, what was in this trailer, man? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you be the one to to drop the bomb. What was what was in this trailer that that all of us are screaming about? So much, and just to set the stage a little bit, and just because this was happening during the Mando Plus uh, panel, so like we had got all the Mandalorian, we saw the trailer, they breaking out, they have 14 uh, chairs on stage, and there's still like two left. And so, like, I had a feeling, and some of my friends were like, it's Mando Plus. That's a play on words. Obviously, Disney Plus. But they're going to be talking about something else. Maybe Ahsoka. And uh, they brought out Rosario Dawson. Everybody was, like, losing their freaking mind. They're talking to her. Life is great. And they're like, oh, we have another friend. And out comes live action Chopper. Lose our mind. And he's, like, being all sassy <laughs> and swearing. Um, he, like, basically gives, like, the middle, like, robot arm to Dave. Like, it was just a great moment. We're all losing our minds. And then they play the trailer. Uh, and they're like, it's very raw. We've only been filming for three weeks. Like, literally, Rosaria flew in the night before because they were filming yesterday. <laughs> um, and, yeah, they showed it. And uh, the biggest takeaway is this is the Rebel sequel. This is, while there might be some other stories going on in the Mando universe and obviously connecting to Thrawn, which is obviously part of Rebels, mm -hmm. ultimately, 
because of what they showed us, I think this was Dave's way of saying, hey, you've been asking for years, where's Ezra? Where's the Rebel sequel show? This is it. You know, they showed us, um, and I I feel comfortable saying this because it's on the internet everywhere. Um, they showed us Hera walking with Ahsoka from the back. Oh. So like we, obviously, it could be another character, but obviously, it's it, it's Hera. It, it was a Twi'lek. It had the Hera outfit. Um, they're walking together. We see uh, the hand, a young hand trying to use the Force with a cup, which Jason. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty, like ninety percent sure it's Jason. And then we see kind of like the interior of a ship, and it looks very much like um, the ghost. Obviously not confirmed, but very, you know, very close. These are very quick shots, like mm-hmm. in the 45 seconds. Uh, we see Ahsoka walking through some ruins. There's like some sort of symbol. We can't really make out what the symbol is. And then it ends, and it looks like we're seeing like the animated mural from the end of the epilogue. Uh, but it's not animated. It's live action. And up steps up the shadow, you see the live action Sabine. And then they, it cuts from there, and then they actually brought the live action Sabine on stage, and they talked to her. Um, I, I kid you not, that was my highlight of my weekend. Um, I, w- I lost my voice as a result of that. I was crying. <laughs> Everyone was, like, shaking. Because it was three weeks, and it looked so good. Like, you would have thought, based off this teaser, that this was coming out next week. It's how good it looked. Wow. Like, I don't know, I don't know how they do it. Did it. That that's, that's great. While you're sitting there saying that, I'm sitting there watching Nick, and he's just smiling ear to ear. <laughs> When you start talking about these Rebels characters, and, you know, I, I saw a meme the other day. It was somebody pulling a Trojan horse into a fort, and the Trojan horse, it said uh, uh, Ahsoka, and then it said inside the the Trojan horse was Rebel Season 5, and it was Dave Filoni pulling it into to Star Wars. Uh, this is going to be one of the biggest things Star Wars fans could have ever asked for. You know, Rebels, I know a lot of people... When Rebels first started, it was the animation style kind of threw them off a little bit. And, you know, it's just for kids. The longer that series went, the darker it got, the the deeper it got. Um, to the point where when, spoilers in case you guys haven't watched it, when Kanan finally dies and he sacrifices himself, there were tears shed over this guy. You know what I mean? And, and, and we were only halfway through that season trying to figure out where we were going to go from there and... How that ended and, and, and everything like that. Yeah, that's a question we've been asking for a long time. And it seems like Dave Filoni is the one answering all these questions that we've had for the last several years. Did Boba Fett survive the Sarlacc pit? Where's Ezra? You know, and and, and, and things. So, Dave. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, just one final thing. It's funny that you bring up the questions because uh, somebody in the audience, like this was like, very towards the end. Somebody like yelled, where's Ezra? And like, all the people started yelling, where's Ezra? Um, and then for, for the first time in like God knows how many years, he like looks at everyone. And he's like, "I know where he is. I'm not telling." <laughs> he's teasing. He was actually teasing. Usually he he he, he gives nothing. these so vague ans- answers. You know, and this time he was just came out and just like, "Oh, I know where he is." Oh God, mm-hmm. this is going to be an awesome show, and I think this is going to be the the conduit in which they introduce our live action Thrawn. He's going to end up being the big baddie that all these shows cross over. I, you know, we were hearing thought, or we were hearing rumors, I guess, of an heir to the empire uh, adaptation, which it would be, a, it'd have to be a very loose adaptation. But I get that's the closest thing you can compare it to that you could call it. So I'm, you know, I'll allow it. Uh, and so I, I know he's going to end up being the big baddie, and people are going to lose their freaking minds over this. Um, and and. I'm looking forward to this Ahsoka series. And I saw the shot of Sabine standing in front of the mural. Uh, so we're getting the epilogue from Rebels in live action. Uh, and, and, you know, because Dave Filoni did come out oh right after, I think it was after Ahsoka made her debut in Mando. And he said that that, that Ahsoka, that version of Ahsoka, is in between the end of Rebels and the epilogue. So by the time the epilogue comes along, her crossover with Din Djarin has already happened. And we were like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Why would you do that? And now that we're getting the Ahsoka series and we see these these shots of, you know, crossing over with Rebels, now it's making sense. She's looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn, and now we're getting to that point where she's going to go meet with Sabine. She's having her little moment, you know, looking at the mirror. Let's let's go get him. And did they did they ever announce officially who's Ezra? Who's playing Ezra? No, but uh, Massad, he had a... Uh... 
very uh just you know normal tweeted uh out that day on that day saying oh congratulations to everybody on the ahsoka cast i'm so glad you guys could show off a little bit like okay you're you're, you're ezra <laughs> he's he's fishing he's he's mm-hmm. he's dancing around the outside of the fire just outside the light where you can't see him he's he's gonna be in it i guarantee it okay. especially you know and and what's <laughs> what's so funny is he played the live action aladdin and there were so many you know, similarities between Ezra and Aladdin being a street rat and everything like that. And then they bring him in to play Ezra. It's so perfect. It's just mm. perfect. So, uh, the Ahsoka series, uh, hopefully that trailer, maybe not necessarily that trailer. If they, if they showed you that much in that trailer, what's going to be in the one when they officially release it, it's going to be ridiculous. Oh, and the other thing was, we know, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead has been cast in Ahsoka. I am willing to bet she's playing Hera. Yep, that's my that's my prediction, uh, and I think she'd make so, a good Hera. I think she would. So uh, that one is that that's ridiculous. So guys, don't even try to go find the trailer. I guarantee it's gone. Uh, so it, it's got to uh, be. I actually think it's funny that uh, you guys were talking about how the animation style of Rebels didn't match Clone Wars and everything, and you know. A lot of people were um, initially, like you said, Brian, initially everybody was like, oh, Clone Wars is just for kids. I mean, not Clone Wars. Rebels is just for kids. Well, guess what? When Clone Wars started, Clone Wars was just for right, kids. Right, right. And then the, the other thing I think a lot of people, you know, forgot is that when uh, Rebels started, you know, Filoni didn't get a chance to finish Clone Wars. Clone Wars was abruptly canceled. Right. Like midway through season five, I think, or six. It went over to Netflix before, you know, he was finally able to get, you know, enough uh, uh, approval for season seven of Clone Wars. And so now you're seeing everything where everything, as we've talked about, is slowly connecting. And I'm okay with this uh, Ahsoka series, you know, bringing back characters from Rebels or even Clone Wars or even Bad Batch or anything like that. I, I, I'm i looking forward to it. Like everybody else has said, Ahsoka has become one of the more beloved characters in the Star Wars universe. And so the fact that we're getting a series, a live action series, and we're getting the sequel to essentially rebels and you know i will say this right now i started watching rebels with my son when he was two years old and that's what got him into star wars and he loves rebels so Uh, yeah no it was it was a doorway for a lot of people getting into star wars and and like you said especially for the younger generations it was it was a great conduit to to get kids into it and now those kids are growing up that was in 2015 you know now they're old enough to watch Ahsoka and we're flowing that story right on ahead and, and finding out where, where Ezra went. And matter of fact, Kirsty and I, two nights ago, we fell asleep watching the finale of rebels just because I was so excited after seeing that trailer. I was just like, I, I have to watch it again. So, uh, the Ahsoka series is going to be ridiculously. It, it, it's not even, I was expecting Ahsoka going off on her own with just Sabine, but we're getting the yeah. entire crew and it's, I, I'm getting chills thinking about it. So uh, that is set for release sometime in 2023. I'm going to guess that's going to be a fall release. If I had to, I think, if I had to guess, so I think it's gonna be our May the Fourth or around there. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're gonna make a big deal about it. I think that this is gonna be their tent. Besides the movie next year, I think this is gonna be their tent pull for next you year. You think it's like, that this close? Is Kenobi. You think it's less than a year out? If they're already filming it, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, well, moving on, uh, we got confirmation that releasing uh, spring of next year, we are getting a Star Wars Visions Season 2. Now, keep in mind, these are not canon stories. They're not necessarily canon stories. Uh, But this is, Visions was kind of a surprise for a lot of us. And, you you know, I've never really been that big into anime myself, personally. Not not knocking anybody who is, but it was never really my my thing. Uh, And then this came along, and it was like, the, the the very first one, the duel, we watched it again the other night. That was beautifully done, you know. I mean, they all were, but they it was just beautifully done. Uh, we're getting a season two, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Nick, uh, did you check out the first season of Visions at all? 
I got about halfway through. Um, uh, and like you said, some of the animation is absolutely gorgeous. But, you know, just, you know, being a father and having a very busy life, you have to pick and choose your battles and what, what to watch. So, or even what to read. And so I just came to the conclusion. I was like, you know what? If I ever get around to visions, I'll get around to it. Um, but I, I, I do remember watching the duel. And like you said, it's one of the more, more gorgeous uh, animation styles out there. So I think for season two of Star Wars visions, hey, more Star Wars. Let's, let's go. I'm, I'm all for it. And we noticed something when we watched the duel last time, and maybe we're late to the game on noticing it, but a lot of those raiders in the in the duel were wearing stormtrooper helmets. There were Imperial and First Order helmets being worn. So this had to have been well after Episode 9, if, if it was canon, well after Episode 9. But I, I, I never really even thought about it. Kirsty was like, are, are those First Order stormtrooper helmets? I'm like, oh. Shit, I think you're right. I think they are. <laughs> so, I, holy crap, I never noticed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to a, a Vision Season 2. JG, did they show you guys anything? No, so I, this is a panel that I missed. Okay. Um, it was a smaller panel, one of the smaller stages. Um, I actually kind of forgot that it was happening, to be honest, but I saw somebody like tweeting, that we like, oh, we got a Season 2. I think the biggest takeaway, though, is that they're not returning solely to Japan. We're going to get uh, animations from, it says, because uh, I pulled up because I have a bad memory, uh, South Africa, Chile, the United States, France, Japan, Spain, India, and the United Kingdom. Jeez, so, they're really opening up. Yeah, so it's not going to be, I would say, it's not going to be solely, like, I guess what you would consider, like, what we in America consider anime, per se. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a lot more just different animation. And so I think it's so cool that we're going to get, we get, especially with Visions, it's giving the creators an opportunity to play with the toys of Star Wars without being limited by the canon um, timeline and canon, every all the things in canon. And so um, as much, I think, this really is a celebration, I think, of why people really you know, loved Legends back in the day. You know, there was a lot of creative freedom for better or for worse. And so I think it's going to be really cool. And I think people should also be on the lookout because we ended up getting that Rodin book. You know, what other book or medium could come out of these stories as well, so... You brought up the Ronan novel, which is interesting because how we've sat here several times. Uh, we've had so many questions asking, you know, why is there no more Legends material? We're, we're getting Legends material, basically. These are Legends stories. Ronan was a Legends novel. We're getting new stuff that's not necessarily canon. And I, I think that's great. I think that's a great thing, you know, and, and there's there's a market for it, you know. And, and honest to God, I love, so I haven't read the, the Ronan novel because I try to strictly stay with the canon and try to and try to so i did i never picked up ronin uh, i've did. heard great things about that book i've heard amazing things about that book um and, and and so why are we not still producing legend stuff you know yeah you've yeah that looks gorgeous just look at that thing it looks gorgeous so uh i yeah i i'm looking forward to this i'm hoping this goes on for a long time i didn't know they were doing all these different animation styles yeah. that's that's some cool news so uh, looking forward to that, and that is coming out this spring. That's less than a year out, too. That's what nine months out, nine or ten months away. So, a lot of this is coming out so quick, and it's things that we had no clue. Not, we, I think we knew Vision C was getting a season two, but some of these other things we had no idea that we were ever going to get. So, uh, it's 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 really cool that we're getting Vision season two, and they're still working on what you said. It gives people a chance to tell a Star Wars story without having their hands tied and they can just be creative and they can tell the story they want to tell, you know, and, and what they see in their mind's eye without, you know, Disney coming down and saying, well, no, 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 that starter story wasn't there at that time. It was over here. So you can't use, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it's nice to not have your hands tied and, and look at the result. Absolutely yeah. awesome. So look at Tatooine Rhapsody, for example, like a yeah. rock band and Tatooine, like that was with a lightsaber as a microphone. Like that was so creative. It's so like ingenious. And so, yeah, it's sky's the limit for these creators. Absolutely. And then I don't remember the name of the other one uh, with the Master and Apprentice uh, where the Apprentice is killed by the tiny little Japanese guy with the with the yeah. dual red sabers. I don't remember which what the name of it was, but just wicked. Right. Absolutely loved it. So uh, the next thing we want to talk about on our list is uh, one that 
uh, I'm going to check out, but it's more geared towards preschoolers, grade schoolers. Uh, we are getting a High Republic animated series come spring 2023 called Young Jedi Adventures. Uh, this is going to be a series that focuses on uh, Padawans and younglings starting their journey uh, with the Jedi. And remember, this is during High Republic. Uh, but it's more for, like I said, the preschoolers, the the grade schoolers, and, and whatnot. And then actually, they announced this after Celebration, didn't they? During. Was it during? Okay. I, I didn't see this uh, until after, apparently. Uh, this is one, you know, Nick, you were talking earlier about Rebels was a really great conduit to get kids into Star Wars. I think this is going to be another great one, you know, and it's just adding to that High Republic uh, era. So, uh, Nick, what are you thinking about this series, man? Um, I'm the old man of the group, so <laughs> I will probably not watch it unless <laughs> my figured. kids will watch it. Um, the, the it, the one person I could probably see watching it would probably be my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she just turned seven this year. So, which means she'll be, if it's between, you know, pre-K to first to third grade, she's right in that age bracket. So maybe she might be interested in it. So if she wants to watch it, sure. Um, I'm not going to poo poo on anybody who will watch it. But like I said, you know, considering the fact I'm the older man of the group, I will probably pass on it. See, I've got a two and a half year old right now, and he'll be three by the time this comes out. Uh, I think this would be a great conduit to get Jensen into Star Wars, you know, and he he already plays with a bunch of my old 95 action figures, the old Power of the Force figures. He plays with them religiously. He absolutely loves them. Uh, and, and he'll sit and watch Star Wars with me. I, he has no idea what's going on. But mm -hmm. it, it captures his attention, you know what I mean? And so I think this will be a great way for him to get into it as well. Uh, JG, I know you're going to check it out because it's Star Wars. <laughs> I, I know I, I know you are, but w what are your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, so A, as a completionist, and then B, as just a High Republic fan, I'm Same. super excited for this. Obviously, I'm not the intended audience. So I'm definitely going to have to check my expectations at the door. Um but if it's it for me personally, if it's anywhere as good as I enjoyed uh, Resistance, then I'm gonna be fine. Like I de Resistance definitely had a younger vibe than even Rebels did, um, and even Clone Wars did. And so if it's if it's on pace for Re Resistance, I'm gonna find so much enjoyment. And I think honestly, I think any fans of the High Republic will just for the sole fact of seeing it visually. Besides the shorts that we've been seeing on the High Republic show on YouTube. Um, with some of the uh, like uh, the updates and such, mm -hmm. we really haven't got to see it visually yet. Besides, you know, a few pictures and such. Besides the art book that will be coming, and so I think a lot of High Republic fans are going to tune into this. And I think this is it's going to be a lot. It's going to watch a lot more than people realize. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, completely off topic, I just thought of something while we were while you were talking about this. Whatever happened to the Star Wars game show that they did? That it just stopped it just stopped. COVID, I think. Oh, oh, because of that. Okay, I didn't know because I I remember hearing like one or two episodes had dropped and then that was the end of it. Like I just I didn't know what what had happened with it. They dropped a full season or two. Oh, I they believe. did. Okay. Yeah, and Ahmed Best is like the Jedi Master. Right. Who does it? So. Yeah, I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know if they'd ever. Done. I, I don't know what made me think of that. It's just. Uh, <laughs> I just. At, while you were talking about that, it, for some reason that popped in my head with him dressed as a Jedi, and I'm like, wait a second, whatever happened to that? I think it was when you talked about the shorts on the YouTube channel, I was like, wait a second, we never got... But anyway, sorry, not to change the topic. Uh, so Young Jedi Adventures is set for release uh, spring of 2023. Uh, if you got youngins, this is the show for you. So uh, let's move on. Getting out of TV series, uh, finally, I shouldn't say finally, we, we're moving on to another medium. We finally got the teaser trailer and a release date. I'm sorry, a release window for Jedi Survivor. This is the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order, uh, a game that a lot of people is a highly anticipated game, uh, especially considering who popped up in the first one, how great the first one was, and uh, just we're we're going to continue on. So we finally got the teaser trailer for this game. Uh, we know we're going to be following Cal Kestis again. This is his story. This is going to be moving, continuing on with where the, the Fallen Order left off. Nick, what are your thoughts on this game, man? Have you seen the trailer? Did you watch it? And uh, what, what, are you, what are you hoping to get out of this game? Yes. 
yes, and yes. <laughs> and then I have a, a horrible confession to make. I own the game. My son has played the game more than I have. No. I have, I have, I have even finished the game. No. Yes. Um, in fact, I will tell you this. I don't think I made it off the, the first planet yet. <laughs> wow. Oh, so you haven't so, even started it yet. You, it's not that you haven't finished it. You just haven't started it. So I'm in the the last time I played it and the last time I think my son has played it, or at least I played it, I got stuck in the train. And, oh, and okay. I, 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 I got frustrated. I was like, okay, I'm done. And then, you know, because for those of you who don't know, the last two and a half years, I've been traveling all over Texas doing COVID testing and vaccines. So mm -hmm. my time was very precious. And for one of, for whatever reason, I just was like, yeah, I'll get around to it. So I, I bought the game when it first came out. I just haven't finished it. So I will, I, I want to watch it. I, excuse me. I, will, I definitely want to play it especially because of again a lot of the tie-ins that you know we're seeing from fallen order now playing into other uh entertainment streams mm -hmm. mainly only one um so yeah i definitely want to play it i want to finish the first one so i can thoroughly enjoy the rest of obi-wan eventually when I go back and rewatch it, and then also in the run up to uh, Survivor, I, I I am definitely looking forward to Survivor. Let, let me ask you this, Nick, because uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you. I don't want to be that guy. JG knows where I'm going with this. Do Do you know? Have you Have you been made aware of who pops up toward the end of the game? You can go ahead and spoil. I, I don't really. I don't want to be that guy. No, no. Oh nope. man, I don't want to be that guy. Dang especially it! Especially if you don't know. Especially if you don't know. Oh, it's oh my chilling. Goodness. It's so awesome. Okay, so I'm not gonna say it, but because of who pops up in the end of the first game, toward the end of the first game, wickedly excited for this one, uh, especially considering. Uh, <sighs> Because of who it is and who Cal Kestis is, and you're like, how is that going to play out? Because now person A knows that Cal Kestis exists. He's not just going to let it go. You know what I mean? So it's that's gonna that's got to play a big part into this, you know. And that person never even popped up in the trailer for for Survivor, not once. So I, you can't just drop somebody like that and then forget about it and just be like oh that never happened wash your hands of it and move on so you know they're going to pop up again later on so uh, um the one thing i will actually say about this game or this game series that it kind of reminds me of is the force unleashed series from um legends and everything and i finished the first one i never got around to playing the second one and so, uh, and so I'm actually, because you don't want to ruin it for me, now I'm actually probably going to start playing tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. Good. Good. You got a whole weekend. Get, a get after it. <laughs> Can I finish it in the weekend? Um, yeah. If you really dedicated, if you were committed, you could do it. Yeah. You'd have, Yeah. You're going to go through a couple 12 packs of Monster, but you could probably do it. Yeah, I hate an orange juice ranch. Okay, so. Mountain Dew. Just something. Something with caffeine in it. You can, <laughs> you, you're going to be able to do it. Um, but you got to, like, you, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to start it tonight uh, and then get up first thing in the morning and just go. And you go, 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 go. D don't make plans this weekend. Like, at all. None. Because yep. you're not going to have any in playing this game. There's, there's not going to be any plans. I'm telling you that right now. And... I can already I can already predict when Nick gets to this certain part to this scene he's going to be <laughs> dropping in the chat. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. He's going to be losing his mind. We're going to be getting capital letter messages and I I just know how it's going to go. I know. I don't know what you're talking about. That I never do that in my No, life. you uh, lies. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> lies. So so uh 
Yeah, no, you you could do it this weekend. Absolutely, give it, at least start it. I want to hear your thoughts if you can get off that stupid train. I would love to hear your thoughts <laughs> because it, one because right. once you get off the train, the game out. the game just explodes, man. It's so good. It, you get you get some Dathomir, you get some uh, some Kashyyyk, like you get like all these other places that you get to to visit and explore repeatedly, more than once on each of them, and it's so much fun. So I'm I'm losing my mind over getting a sequel uh, and I'm hoping that they're going to end up making this. I, I hope this one's a cliffhanger. I hope it's a cliffhanger and I hope they're already planning for a third game and, and that it's, it's going to cross into the larger universe eventually, if you know what I mean. So uh, survivor, I'm sorry, Jedi survivor, the sequel to Jedi fallen order uh, is set to release in 2023. Uh, we are getting a new comic series, a, a mini series, a 10 issue mini series of star Wars Yoda. He's getting his own 10-issue run, which is kind of weird because usually characters get five-issue runs, and then that's the end of it. He is getting 10 issues. It's going to be three trilogies, three stories that are each a trilogy back-to-back, and then one issue at the end to tie them all together. Uh, This is set to come out sometime this year, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nick, I know you're not big on the comics. JG, I know you are. Uh, what are, What are you hoping to get out of this story? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, it's because I do believe it's Kevin that's writing the first trilogy. Yes, yes, Kevin Scott uh, can do so, no wrong either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and he was talking about it because I was actually sat. Uh, I unexpectedly went to the Marvel Comics panel, um, and so I heard him talk about it. I'm pretty excited. You know, uh, comics is something that if, if it's not High Republic, I don't really get too excited over. But hearing him Fair. talk about this really was really intriguing, and so. It's definitely something I'll check as a completionist. And again, as it being by Kevin, it's going to be really good. And he writes Yoda really well, too. So oh, he does. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting to see because this is such a unique format where they're doing it as like three separate trilogies that it's going to have an underlying story that will then conclude in a final issue. Mm-hmm. Very unique storytelling method for a comic. So I'm excited. Uh, from what I read, this will be picking up before it's while Luke. I'm sorry, while Yoda is on Dagobah, and before Luke shows up for the first time, and this is basically kind of what the Obi Wan uh, comic is doing right now, where Obi Wan is kind of doing memoirs and kind of writing his, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of writing his memoirs, his autobiography kind of thing, um, and that's what this is going to be. Also, Yoda telling three separate stories and then one big issue to tie them together. So. Uh, Looking forward to this. It's always great when we get a new title for Star Wars, uh, especially with Kevin Scott writing it. Uh, The only thing that he's ever done that I wasn't a fan of was Jackson the Rabbit. I was never a big fan of Jackson. I know. I'm sorry. I just, I can't. He's, if, for those of you that don't know, uh, it's basically Bugs Bunny in Star Wars. It's like, it's, it's basically Bugs Bunny. And so, and I'm waiting. I just know at some point. In one of these television shows that we're getting, that we're going to get a live action Jackson at some point, Jackson Rabbit. And I I know there's people out there that love him, but every time he pops up, I'm like, son of a, you know, and and even in the old legend stuff, they hated him. There's a cover of Jackson, you know, with his ear up to the door and you see Han, Luke, Leia, Lando, the droids, Chewie, like all hiding on the other side of the door, like, shh, be very, very quiet, basically, you know, and. So, other than that, Kevin Scott can do no wrong. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to this series. And uh, what I'll probably do is just get all ten issues. That'll probably be a ten-month run. And then I'll just sit down and just read all ten back-to-back. I think it's what I'm going to end up doing. So, uh, looking forward to that also. Can't wait to add that to the collection. Let's get into some High Republic stuff. I know this is something JG's really looking forward to. We got a lot of High Republic announcements uh, out of Celebration. A lot of new novels, comics, uh, and an audio drama that we got announced also. So let's do novels first. Uh, first off, before we get into this, Nick, have you dabbled in any of the High Republic stuff at all yet? When did it first start, the High Republic? Was it last year? About a year? year and a half ago, yeah. Okay, so I've tried. I, like I said, I have tried, uh, uh, like, when the first book dropped, I think by Claudia Gray, and I know for a lot of, you know, people, Claudia Gray can't do no wrong in terms of Star Wars. She's a queen. Okay. <laughs> she is. 
I, I happen to think Timothy Zahn is... The He's the team. king. <laughs> <laughs> and then I personally think they should bring back Michael Stackpole. But mm. that's, anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I want to. I really want to get into the High Republic, but for whatever reason, it's really hard for me to get into that stuff right now. And, you know, so it's part of the reason why I'm, and, you know, me and you have talked about this mm -hmm. is why I am really looking forward to Acolyte coming out. I think next, it's coming out next year, isn't next it? year. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think once Acolyte comes out, then I'll probably get involved into it. And then, you know, in terms of, you know, that's, that's the one I'm really looking forward to, I guess, in the High Republic's era. Fair enough. I, I was trying to figure out what your stance was before we started talking about all these books. <laughs> um, and, and honestly, there's not a lot of detail on any of these books either. It's basically and, and, just titles and covers. Yeah, and know what? I, I don't, I don't hate the High Republic. From ev everybody that I've, I've spoken to and talked to, JG included, they've, they've. They're raving about it. About oh, how it, JG it, how, or not JG? Uh, Richard J hated Geode. He <laughs> hated Geode as a character. That was a debate. <laughs> he yeah, because and, and he popped up a lot more in some other uh, content as well. Um, Nick, I'd love to get your thoughts on Geode. He's basically a rock. He's a sentient rock. <laughs> and so he no, he's he's a navigator on a on a, on this freighter. And he doesn't talk. He doesn't move. Well, he moves, but you don't see him move. He just appears. He's just, boom. Like, whoa, shit, where'd you come from? It's like, like weeping angels like, in Doctor Who. Basically, yeah. And no face. He's just a, he's just this, he's just this, like, rectangular rock. stone. Yeah, he's a rock. He's literally a, a rectangular rock. Nothing more and, and nothing less. And for a second, what well, which novel was it? Um, I think it was The Fallen Star. When he took the blaster bolt, and, and when the blaster was bolt was flying around the hangar bay, and it hits him, my first thought was they did not just kill Geode, and I was like, no way. And then he just brushed it off, basically. But he never speaks. He has no face. And he's no. He's literally a rock. He doesn't move. You don't see him move. He just appears in places. He's very flirtatious, though. I will. Very I will say flirtatious. that flirtatious. He had a human woman like on him like ready to go like oh locked God. cocked ready to rock like and 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 her husband was jealous of a rock dude and oh, i didn't even mean to make that pun ready to rock i didn't even mean to make that pun <laughs> but he he's just richard J despises him like when we're done recording get in the chat nick and ask richard J what he thinks of geode and you are gonna have an amazing conversation with him i'm just letting you know that right now um, well, he's probably asleep right now. It's worth it. He'll wake up for Geode. I guarantee it. Uh, so we got we got a bunch of we got a bunch of novels announced and and like zero details surrounding them except their titles. We didn't get covers for all of them and and basically who's writing them. Uh, we're getting a novel by Zoraida Cordova named Convergence, and we have no idea what order they're coming out in either. We do actually. Do we? Okay, you might have more info than I do. Yeah, I can find it, but yeah, keep going. Okay. Uh, we got George Mann doing Quest for the Hidden City, uh, Lydia Kang writing Cataclysm, Tessa Gratton writing Quest for Planet X, which for some reason sounds like a Star Trek title to me. Uh, Kevin Scott is writing Path of Vengeance, which just the title of it sounds freaking awesome. Um, and then we're also getting a collection of Star Wars Insider short stories, uh, Starlight Stories, which is going to be coming out as well, which I'm glad they're doing because not everybody subscribes to Star Wars Insider, and you can't get these stories. And since they're releasing them this way, it's a good way for people like me to get them. You know, I'm not subscribed to the magazine. so. Um, but I'm, these novels, I'm, looking, I'm surprised they announced as many as they did, considering what we already knew was coming out. You know, so Phase 2 is going to be huge. So, JG, which one of these, uh, I shouldn't say which one are you looking forward to the most because we don't know anything about them. Uh, what, what, do you, what are you thinking this, about this phase two? Because, you know, we're going back 150 years uh, further from where we are now with High Republic. What, what, are you, what are you thinking about this? Yeah, I'm super excited. So it looks like here, because we had already had known the titles for the first batch. They right. kind of showed the covers for the first 
patch. And it looks like then they revealed the title for the second wave, if they're going to do the same three-wave structure. Uh, you know, an easy answer, so I'm excited for all of it. But um, <laughs> um, honestly, though, I'm just excited to see where it's going to lead us. You know, the, they talked about how, you know, some of us had speculated, like, are they kind of doing the same thing as the Skywalker saga, where they tell the original trilogy, then the prequel trilogy, and then the sequel? I think that's And they mentioned yeah. that. They literally bring that up. They don't say that that's exactly what they're doing, but they're like, yeah, we're, we're like mirroring that. And so, you know, we see a lot of these covers. There are some new characters. There are some new uh, Jedi. There are some non-Jedi. They definitely teased a lot of, uh, it wasn't Convergence. It was the YA novel that we already have the cover for. Uh, um, quest for the, the hidden path, city no the path no. of deceit oh I okay yeah okay gotcha gotcha they talked about that one like they danced around a lot of that one and they said that that um they were talking huge accolades like they were saying like that's the best book that they've written so far so wow um i'm pretty excited for that to see what they do with that um but just to see all the authors together just talking about it for like the first time in front of all the fans um, in the panel itself, they had I think they said that the room was filled with over four thousand people. Wow! So for a for a book franchise right now, yeah. like the High Republic is paving the way. Wow! Yeah, no, it, it's it, and like I said, I was really surprised that they released as many titles as they did, um, yeah. and 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 kind of paving that roadmap. And you know, you were you were talking about how they went back in time, and now they're probably going to phase three is probably going to be after. After the phase them, one, basically. right? Yeah, so we're gonna go back to to Mar. Do they ever officially announce how you pronounce Rose's name? Is it Martian or Markion? Because everybody <laughs> pronounces joke. it differently. That was a big joke during the panel. Um, I think Charles Soul. I think he. I think he's the Markion row. But then Mark Thompson, who was on the panel as well, was kept saying Martian to antagonize him. So I don't think there's a right answer. I think gotcha. it's our at 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 at. Gotcha. Okay, because I I remember reading somebody. Had said that the, one of the audiobooks pronounced it one way, another audiobook pronounced it another, and there was no like it's kind of like Leah, Leia, Han, Han, is it that kind of thing? I'm assuming so. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to this, I'm I'm all caught up on High Republic finally, and uh, really excited to see what they're going to end up doing with this, and and the fact that they sat down and did a roadmap with this. They, I mean, they're doing concept art for novels. You know what I mean, and, and and it's just insanely what they're what they're doing and how they're crossing over their comics with their novels, all these same events happening from different points of view. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they they bring to the table with the next wave. They also announced uh, some new comics as well, and and one of these announcements kind of blew what I was saying a couple episodes ago completely out of the water. Uh, and, and I'll talk about that in a second. We're getting Marvel's The High Republic number one. We're starting back over at issue number one for this next wave. Uh, and, and we're just going to hit the ground running, I guess, with it. We're also getting a, I guess, a miniseries of The High Republic, The Blade, number one. Uh, excited to see what that one is. And then here, here's the one that kind of blew everything I was saying out of the water. We were talking about Dark Horse, I think, two weeks ago. And how, like, Star Wars Adventures, done. High Republic Adventures, done. Never happening again. That was an IDW thing. And Dark Horse is going to be continuing that. We're getting the High Republic Adventures number one from Dark Horse now, and they're starting that series over as well. Uh, a lot of comics, and then also we're getting, uh, what was the title of the one Claudia Gray is working on? I don't remember off the top of my head. A Quest of the I, Jedi? Yeah, I think it's okay, something like that. Okay, so she's writing a comic as well. Uh, excited to see what's going to be coming out of that one too, but... Uh, the the same thing that I said for the novels goes for the comics as well. I'm excited to see what they've got lined up and how it's going to cross over with the novels. And they've already shown that they can tell an awesome interweaving story. I'm excited to go back another 150 years and, and see what this one is. What do you think with the comics? Yeah, um, the comics have so far been really critical. I think the one thing we could see from the first wave is how important it is. Because when you got to the Fallen Star... If you were not reading the comics, you were going to be missing some of the story. And so mm -hmm. I know that could be very frustrating for some people, um, you know, who maybe don't have the time or the resources. But that is the way that they're going. And so I think the comics are going to continue to pave that path. And where if you want this full story from every corner of the High Republic, you're going to have to pick up the comics. You're right. Because um, I just finished Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older. And there were a lot of characters in that book that were from the uh, the High Republic Adventures. 
uh, several of them. You almost had to read that entire series to know anything at all that was going on in, in, in uh, Midnight Horizon, especially with uh, Zula, I think is what her name was, right? Yep. Zula, and, and, and trying to hunt down her her old friend from her home planet. And, and so I started reading this, and I'm like, I'm so glad I kept up on all this and read all the comics too because now I know who all these characters are. I know their histories. I know what's going on in the background. I know what's going on behind the scenes now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of story they're going to tell with this one. I hope they kick it off with a really cool punch in the gut like they did with The Great Disaster in Light of the Jedi. Uh, and, and, you know, something about Light of the Jedi I really liked was they said this is how this is going to happen. There's going to be this great disaster, and you know it's coming, and the book basically counts down minutes before, you know, the event and everything. And it builds up this this uh, suspense of what's getting ready to happen. And then when it finally happens, you're like, holy shit, that is really big. Like, you know, so I, I want to see what they can tell. I, w- I want to see them top it. Everything they can, I want to see it top what came up before, you know. So uh, really looking forward to this wave also. And then the other thing I'm looking forward to, uh, we're getting our first uh, audio drama from the High Republic, The Battle of Jeddah by George Mann. And do what? Second. Because we got the Lorna. Oh, D we one. got we got the Lorna D one. You're right. Well, the yeah. Temptress Runner. You're right. We got the second. This is the second one. You're right. I stand corrected. Um, George Mann is an awesome author. He wrote all of the the tales of or what was it? Um, uh, uh, Dark Legends. He wrote all of the uh, myths and fables. He wrote even the Life Day Treasury, which is my least favorite of the three. But you know, I digress. Whatever. Uh, Dark Legends was awesome. I love everything he writes. So. Uh, Nick, I know you don't have a lot of time to sit down and read books. I, I, I know the lifestyle. I know the scheduling that you that you live with. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. I know it is. So, is the Battle of Jeddah something you're going to think you're going to be able to listen to as an audio drama? Concern the fact uh, uh, when I leave for Houston at, my, at the beginning of the week, and then I come back to San Antonio at the end of the week. That's a two and a half three hour car ride so yeah i can definitely listen to it i've uh i've actually downloaded uh star wars uh brotherhood the uh obi-wan uh Mm -hmm. anakin one and got about halfway through it and i again it's one of those things in which i just kind of need to slog through and finish like i so yeah, definitely the Battle of Jedi. Jedi if it's a high drama where they're going to have multiple uh, actors playing uh, different characters and everything, then yeah, I will definitely give it a listen to a try. Fair enough, JG. Uh, audio drama is actually probably my favorite format. It's kind of what I grew up listening to and how I consume my stories as a child. And so ever since Star Wars has started that, you know, with Dooku Jedi Lost, mm-hmm. Afra. Um, and beyond now, I'm just so excited. And I think, especially for us fans of uh, Rogue One, I think we're really going to get some uh, questions. You know, we see the Jedi statues that are on the ground. We uh-huh. see the ruins, and we see all the different religions. Jedi is going to be a pillar for this phase of the High Republic, they said, and that there are multiple religions. There are multiple beliefs in the Force. And so seeing it, I would think, conclu- not conclude, but lead up to this great battle – <laughs> it's gonna get it just gives me chills just thinking about what on earth because like who is who's who's the uh antagonist then because obviously the Niho are necessarily right. a big part at this point right now are we getting some sith maybe like there's a lot of possibilities that this door can open uh, and i'm very excited and with a full cast and writing from george Mann, oh it's gonna be so good you know you brought up the sith the sith are out there during oh, yeah. this entire High Republic thing, and is watching from the shadows everything that's going on, and they, you'd think they'd pop up at some point, you know, not not to be seen by the Jedi, because remember the Jedi in Episode One said they haven't they've been extinct for a millennium, so the Jedi cannot know the Sith exist, but to see them pop up and maybe work with the Nihil or somehow, or maybe if we find out later on down the road they are like Nihil or the puppets, and the Sith are using them. I mean, that would just they're out there. You know, there's yeah. two Sith out there somewhere that is watching all this happen from the shadows. It'd be cool to see it, you know, on Jeddah, especially the the Force Holy Land. You know what I mean? The Guardians of the Wills Holy Land. So, yeah, absolutely. The, this is one I'm really looking forward to. Um, and, I, you know, I, I listened to Tempest Runner, which was awesome. I loved Tempest Runner. 
It was so good. And usually I'm not an audiobook guy. Um, but I really, really did enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. So I'm downloading that right now. Which it's one? Worth a listen. Which one? Tempest Runner? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um it follows Lorna D. She's one of the Tempests and and Marcion, Marcion, whatever, Marcion Rose, uh at Nihil and uh really, really cool story. It really stands cool. on its own pretty well, so you could probably actually enjoy that story pretty much on its own and oh, yeah. continue with the other stories. I will say also, Brian, because I don't see it in the notes, so I want to make sure we get to it. Okay. There were two other books that were talked about for the High Republic. Okay. Uh, there was the there are reference books. So the first we have the Art of the High Republic. Oh they yeah. Cover from that. You're right. Um, Kristen Baver talked about it. She's the writer. Um, I think a big thing for that is that she modeled after Phil. I can't say his last name. I'm not even going to his time. <laughs> uh, but he but he does all the art of books for like Solo and the sequel trilogy and Mandalorian. So, like, if you really have enjoyed all of those art of books, you're going to love this. And it has all of the different – they showed us uh, Yoda with, like, a top knot. They showed us different uh, pictures of Ember. Like, it's a full art of book that – oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, and what was the other one? Uh, so the other one is called – this is the spicy one. It's called The High Republic Chronicles of the Jedi, an illustrated guide to the ga- galaxy's golden age. Okay. That comes out in November 29th. What's interesting about this is two things. One, it's written from an in-universe perspective. So some Jedi or character is talking about all these items, events, and relics and such about the High Republic. And they said that it's going to tease events that have come, events that will come, and things for Phase 3. And ultimately, they also – yeah, Phase 3. And they said that this is one book that you're not going to want to sleep on, and you're going to want to grab it on day one and start reading immediately. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I didn't have those in the notes. Um, no, yeah, we, we, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna have to pick those up because uh, I'm not as into High Republic as you are, JG. I'm, I'm there. I really, really yeah. am enjoying it. I really am, and I, and I read everything up on it. Um, but I know you get way, you get excited about High Republic stuff, yes. and so yeah, this it's is this is one we're gonna have to pick up. Yeah, this so, is one we're gonna have to pick up. So, so I will say this: those two books you mentioned, JG. So if you could. Uh, message me the the titles again i you know those two books for me those might actually be a way for me to actually get caught up on everything without actually having to read everything right you know time is precious and so when you don't have a lot of it you want you want to be able to it's like give give me the basics give me the uh, meat and potatoes the the cliff notes yeah yeah um, all right, so that is everything that came out of Celebration basically this year uh, as far as canon stuff goes. Really cool announcements. Uh, I really thought we'd get a title for Taika Waititi's Star Wars film. No mention of it at all, hardly. And we did find out, you know, we're getting Indiana Jones 5 next year. They showed the trailer for the Willow series, the sequel series. So uh, there, there was more than just Star Wars there. But uh, that was everything that kind of pertains basically to this show keeping up with the canon and everything. So uh, really cool celebration. I really wish that they had actually aired everything where everybody could watch it instead of keeping it very exclusive, which I I get. But, you know, show it exclusively and then two days later drop it for everybody else. You know you know what I mean? So uh, that's why I'm, I'm really glad JG decided to drop in uh, for this episode. So, so he had a firsthand experience on all that stuff, and I'm truly jealous. Um, next year's celebration is going to be London. I think it's in April, isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's less than a year away already. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, let's get into what I know Nick is chomping at the bit to talk about. Uh, last week on Friday, we finally and, – and they dropped it early. They dropped it three hours early. We finally got the first two episodes of the long-awaited Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries. Uh, and, and then we got episode three this past Wednesday – and we're coming up on episode four next week already. Uh, this show, in my opinion, is ridiculous. It's just, it, it, it's the first episode, because Gary and I, my, my father-in-law, sat down and we watched episodes one and two together. And the first episode, me as a Star Wars fan, I'm loving every minute of it, right? I mean, every every moment of it, even him just riding back and forth across the desert, I'll sign me up, I'll sit and watch it all day. But the second episode is when everything really kicked into high gear and and really took off. And that's when, like, my father-in-law was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm glad they dropped them both at once because after the first episode, I probably wouldn't have come back to watch the second one. 
Um, Nick, you were messaging me before I got to watch uh, the first two episodes. Uh, you and I are both veterans. We've both had to deal with the whole PTSD aspect with with kind of you know our histories and everything like that. And you told me that Obi Wan is having serious PTSD moments in this series. And you're not wrong, man. It is cut and dry, absolutely. That's exactly what it is he's dealing with. Uh, Nick, what are your thoughts on this series so far? So, as someone, like I mentioned, you know, I, I, I'm still in. You know, I, I'm a full-timer now in the National Guard. And, you know, I've had four deployments and everything. And... You know, then especially going through my major life change last year, uh, it, it you know I I was watching this and I was like I I'm like I'll be honest I was like I I'm Obi Wan and it's like I can and it's like I'm let me rephrase that I'm Ben I'm not Obi Wan you know in a lot of ways you know. We, we've seen all those memes where it's like Obi-Wan and Anakin died on that um, high ground on Mustafar and Vader and Ben were born. In a lot of ways, I'm Ben. Um, you, you see, you see Obi-Wan, you know, struggling, you know, with survivor's guilt, you know, nightmares, flashbacks, things like that, wanting to be left alone, you know, uh, being very much a hermit, and but at the same time, needing to go out among people and everything. He wants to help, but at the same time, he knows that if he does help, he will. You know, he'll go. He if he if he helps, he'll expose himself in a in a time where he cannot expose himself because the inquisitors are. At, actively out looking for him and you know I, I think the thing that I loved about the first two episodes and we'll get into the third one in a minute oh yeah it's a beast of itself yeah <laughs> but but the first two it, it just it, that I loved about it and I could we could do a four hour expose on Obi-Wan so I, I just need to be quiet about it but <laughs> Um, in terms of Obi-Wan, you, you watch him, and I think one of the first scenes we see of Obi-Wan is him asleep, you know, going back and forth, and it's nothing but images and flashbacks of what's going on from the Clone Wars and everything. And then him, you know, when they're asking, you know, when Bail Organa and his wife are asking him to help and he's like no i i have a responsibility here and he's trying to also talk to essentially what is his family it really is even his family but he feels like it is his family and he's watching luke grow up from a distance and as somebody who in a lot of ways did that last year with his kids me with my kids, I, I get it. I, I, I get where Obi-Wan was going. And then him being completely shocked when the third sister says, Anakin's alive, Obi-Wan. Anakin's alive. And he is just, you, you see that grief and guilt on his face. Like, I left my friend to die. And he, you know, I thought he was dead and he's still alive. And to me, it's just, I'm really liking where it's going. I, I love where it's going. Now, Obi-Wan aside, I'm really loving the fact that we're getting more images of Alderaan and how they're going deeper into the Alder, you know, the Alderaan stuff. Because um, all we saw for a very brief moment in the prequels was the ship landing and then just Ralph McQuarrie's artwork. We've never actually seen Alderaan. I love the fact that we're getting more of Bail Organa. Uh, my one critique of the entire series so far, I just feel it's a little short. 
I, I don't know how else to say it. I, you know, I, I know there's a lot of grief and drama going on with Moses Ingram. I happen to love the third sister, Reba. I think she's an amazing character. I am willing to bet money to know how her character is going to meet her demise. <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. But so far, I've, like I said, I, I, I've spoken to so many of my colleagues and friends that serve, and they've all said the same thing. They're like, Obi-Wan has horrible PTSD, and but we cannot believe how much we're loving this. Show. this. This is literally when they announced, when Disney announced 10 years ago that they were buying Lucasfilm. This was one of the shows or movies we wanted. We wanted an Obi Wan movie, mm -hmm. and we we had to wait almost we waited almost a decade to get it, and it's finally here. Yeah, and you know, you and talked about, you know, at one point it was a movie that they were going to do. They were going to tell the story in a movie, and then uh, then it became a series. You know, the same way the the Boba Fett movie I think they were working on ended up becoming its own series, and it. This show, there's there's been a lot of things that have happened in this show that that I was hoping would happen, things that I that I was predicting would happen. You know, certain things being said um, between the two of them, but there's so much in this that is still jaw dropping about how how much agony and how miserable Obi Wan's life is at this point, and you know, it's not just. It's not just the whole all the Vader stuff either. It's him living on Tatooine. You know, we never we never thought about it. Obi Wan had to have had a day job to pay for everything. You know what I mean? He has a day job, and he takes that little sliver of meat home. You know, every single night, and and it's just living in a cave. You know, his best friend is a jaw that steals from him. You know what I mean? And and so, and you know, going through all this stuff, even ten years later. Uh, it's traumatizing, you know, he's saying I'm not the man I once was never was I, I mean we knew there had to be something to get Obi-Wan off a planet, there had to be something so important to get him off Tatooine away from Luke and I think somebody, I don't remember who it was, somebody on the podcast at one point said you know, maybe it's Leia Leia's the only other person that would be important enough to get Ben off of Tatooine and here we are you know, the, the little girl they got to play Leia is so perfect. And she brings that sassiness and everything. You know what I mean? And so seeing Bail Organa again and seeing Bria and, and kind of their interactions, especially with Leia, you know, when they're telling her to apologize to her cousin, she's like, I'd rather be digested by, you know, and, and, and just walks away. It's that's Princess Leia. You know what I mean? And, and so seeing Obi-Wan deal with all this and then have to turn around and Watch Luke from afar, never allowed to be anywhere near him, but now he's being forced to go find Leia and protect her, physically protect her face to face. You know, it's it's kind of a cool dynamic knowing that, like he said in the show, his duty was to the boy. And Bale's like, what about his sister? You know, she's just as important. You're the only other person who knows she's how important she is. The only thing I want to say about Bale Organa, though, uh, I think it's kind of a dick move that at this point he knows that Obi-Wan's alive and he knows that Ahsoka's alive. And he hasn't said a word to either either of them about the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what that would do to Obi-Wan, finding out that Ahsoka was still alive? It, he, it would boost him. You know what I mean? Uh, but these first two episodes, uh, you know, when she says to, you know, when she's, you know, like you brought up, Nick, you know, you didn't know, did you? Anakin Skywalker's still alive. One of the only, well, there's two issues I have with this episode, with the second episode. One of them is the Grand Inquisitor. What happens to him? Yeah. We still don't know how that's going to play out, right? Because we know he's alive in Rebels, so I'm, I'm, I'm we're going to see how that plays out. The other thing, and I have this massive theory, and I want to see what you guys think of this. Uh, so the third sister knows that Vader is Anakin, and anybody who's ever found that out dies. Like, Vader does not mess around. He kills them. Um, there's a really cool shot from the second Vader run where he captures Jocasta Nu, and they're in a Republic ship. JG knows what I'm talking about. And she's like, oh, you hate Jedi so much. She's talking to the clones, and she's like, but you're being led by one. You know who that is, right? And points at Darth Vader, and she goes, that's Anakin Skywalker. 
And all the clones kind of look at each other, and they look at Vader, and Vader looks back, and the frame cuts to outside the ship, and Vader's throwing clones outside the ship as it's flying, killing them, and he crashes the ship, killing Jocasta and everybody, all the other witnesses, murders everybody. And so my theory is, you know, this, this was obviously the little girl at the beginning of episode one that ran from the temple. Uh, on the way out, we're going to see a scene of Anakin killing people. We're going to see a flashback of how she found out Anakin was Vader. She's going to see Anakin Skywalker murdering Jedi, maybe fighting Syndralic. That'd be kind of cool to see, you know, in the series. And then knowing that Obi-Wan was the one that trained him, and that's why she's out to catch Obi-Wan and why she's hunting him down. And she knows that Anakin is Vader at this point. Uh, I I think this, I, I, I that's my theory at this point. Um, and maybe it's obvious to everybody else. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But that's, that's kind of where I'm going with it uh, at this point. And, uh, JG, what are your thoughts on the first two episodes before we start getting into the third one? Because the third one was just a jaw dropping treat. So what, what were your thoughts on the first two episodes? Yeah, the first two episodes were pretty interesting. Uh, I was pretty excited finally, cause Obi-Wan for the longest time has been one of my favorite characters. Uh, Ahsoka has kind of slid into that spot for me, but Obi-Wan is just, he's Obi-Wan. And so to see the transformation and where he is and how he gets, how we're starting to see that in the aftermath. It's just, the acting is unreal in this series and it's so well done. And I just, I I don't get some of the complaints that are being directed towards some of the actors. I love how unhinged the third sister is. I love how she just, it gives me almost Joker vibes, just crazy. And you don't know what she's going to do. And she's going to do something super irrational. She's going to hurt herself. She's going to hurt her allies. Like, she is direct on a mission, and she's going to do anything and everything to complete that, no matter the cost. And that is it's frightening and scary, and I and I love how she's playing it. I think it also just reminds me of a frightened young girl, and I think that's what she is. Mm-hmm. She is scared. She is alone. She has ended up in this situation where I don't think she wants to be an Inquisitor. I think that's the life that she's, that's been forced on her, and, and whatever has happened to led to that, whatever she saw in the temple— assuming she is one of the padawans she's she, you go from a lifestyle of the jedi into this and it's just i, I can't even imagine of course she's going to act like this and, and she's going to be so hell-bent on a mission to get revenge uh i think everyone else is it's it's uh, the acting the acting is what stood out acting and the music natalie holt is the composer except for the theme mm-hmm. which was done by john williams and natalie holt did the music for the loki series uh which is some of my favorite marvel music right now so uh overall i i think that this is going to be some of the best star wars we get i think ahsoka show is gonna slide into there but for now oh, kenobi yeah. is uh, taking it i uh and and i'm seeing a lot of people you know we, we can talk about the third episode here for for a few minutes because it's this is the episode that I think a lot of us were – I think this is what we were kind of waiting on. Um, I think it was just a taste of what's coming in the second half of the series. I, this definitely wasn't the duel between them. You know, Kathleen Kennedy said during that investor's call that it's going to be the rematch of the century. That was not the rematch of the century. That Not by a long shot. That doesn't even – that no, that doesn't even count as a rematch. That's just – that's the pre-show, you know, so – We've got some big stuff coming in this series, and from what we've seen so far, just the taste of it was beautifully done, uh, in my opinion. Uh, this Vader is a menace. He is an absolute menace in you know in this mining town. He just tried to draw Obi Wan out. He murders a man, breaks his son's neck, and leaves the widow to just mourn. Uh, drags a woman through the through the dirt, choking her, which is just rude. You know, I mean, he's just, he's, he's a menace and, and he knows Obi-Wan is there. Um, and, and he, he's, he's wanting revenge. He hates Obi-Wan. He absolutely despises him. He wants to put him through the same thing that he went through. Uh, the, the whole fire scene was just jaw dropping. Just, it, it was, there's no words, you know, him, him picking him. It was, it, it was kind of. Remember when we went and saw Rogue One for the first time and we got that that Vader hallway scene and how terrifying Vader was again. It was yeah, you're right. It was Chef's kiss. It was beautiful. And you know, especially that moment when he used the force to lift the guy up to the ceiling, walks under him and then slashes backwards without even looking, you know, like and to see 
that angry Vader. This is an angry Vader. Remember, this is not the Vader from the classic trilogy. This is a very still young, angry Darth Vader. And to see him pick Obi-Wan up and throw him into these flames like this and drag him through them was bone chilling. And he just stood there and, and there's something about seeing Darth Vader with flames reflecting in his eyes that is just terrifying. This this show made Vader terrifying again. And my favorite line, and it's something that I knew I, I knew had to be said. It wasn't exactly how I thought it was going to be done, but it was th- the line was still there. I was predicting that Obi-Wan would see Anakin suiting up as Vader and and Anakin basically saying, "Look at what look at what you did to me." This is all your fault. You know what I mean? And we got, we didn't get that, but we got an iteration of it where Obi-Wan asks him, what have you become? And I am what you made me. And it's just bone chilling and him telling Obi-Wan, you should have killed me when you had the chance and, and all this. So awesome. So awesome. And it's just, it just it's, it's, it's a taste of what's to come. Obi-Wan's going to get, he's going to get back on the horse. He's going to, he's going to come back full force because this is not the same Obi-Wan from A New Hope. The the Obi Wan in A New Hope was pretty sure of himself, you know, and and this is he was he didn't seem as broken in A New Hope as he does here, and there's got to be some I don't want to say redeeming factor, but there's got to be something there that causes Obi Wan to kind of come back full force. If we're getting that freaking duel on the sands of Tatooine or wherever it is, you know what I mean? It's gonna happen. Uh, Nick, what were your thoughts on this third episode, man? <laughs> Um, it's, it, it's hard to pick where to start. Well, l- let's let's start off with I think what everybody is agreeing to. I think the pe- person that is stealing the show from Obi Wan is Young Leia. Yeah, and and the back and forth Obi Wan and Leia are having what they had in at the end of the second episode, and then during that whole truck ride or whatever that uh, uh that ride to meet up with their ally and how you know and, and the the truth bomb or you know the the bomb that obi-wan dropped that you know he said hey you look so much like your mother you know and all this stuff but then she asked well what about your family and then he was talking about you know i was you know, I left my family when I was very young. I just have images of my father, my mother. And then he was like, I have memories and uh, feelings of, I believe I had a brother. And when I heard that, it's like, oh my God. And, you know, because I, I, I just, in my head, it's like the entire Star Wars nerdum and fandom is just geeking out right now. It's like, Obi-Wan has a brother? when's the show coming out about him when's the books coming out about him and that and everything and but then the other thing i noticed too and i you know i was watching somebody else earlier you know and they were doing a review on it is all we saw about the empire for a very long time was they are evil they are horrible blah you know things like that but then you have this alien creature that's just picking up people (laughs) going back and forth and it's like a little good order and discipline never hurt anybody and so you know in a lot of ways you know for people on these outer rim planets the empire in some ways is a good thing because they bring they brought order when you know for these people that you know had their livelihoods being taken up by raiders and everything but the second half of that episode was just was just like mind blowing to say the least i i got vibes of you know people you know hiding hiding you know people uh you know hiding um minority like i i got the vibes of you know, like, like underground, like underground, yeah, uh, Yeah. underground railroad. And then, uh, Obi-Wan, uh, finding out Quinlan boss is still alive. And, and now I'm thinking, are we going to maybe see him in Obi-Wan? I don't think we will, but I think he'll might pop up in some other episodes or other series now. Um, but then that whole scene where we're just witnessing what Vader is doing 
through the eyes of Obi-Wan going down that that street. And to me, that that is Vader. That's the Vader I've actually been waiting for. We only caught a glimpse of Vader, of what Vader was in Rogue One. This is the Vader everybody's been waiting for. He is just terrifying. He is ma- menacing. And in a lot of ways, I think a lot of people don't realize this too, is nobody really knows who that person is. Mm-hmm. All they've heard about in the galaxy is this menacing figure from the Empire that if he comes around, people are going to die. And that is what we got. And you hit the nail on the head about the the confrontation between Obi-Wan and Vader. Obi-Wan wasn't trying to fight Vader. Obi-Wan was literally trying to run for his life Mm because he knew at that point in time, yes, Anakin's the chosen one, but he has fallen to the dark side. I need to run for my life. That was even a fight. That was a straight up uh, back alley, you know, but what they, and that Vader gave him. JG, man. And, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I am just waiting for the second half of the season. So that's all. I, yeah, it's it's. this is what we got in the first half. The second half is going to be ridiculous. JG, what, what, <laughs> what was going through your mind when, you know, Vader's walking down the street and you see him turn and look, you know, and he knows he knows Obi-Wan's there. He knows he is. And he's he's just there's something about the way he was tracked. It was like a Jason Voorhees kind of following, you know, he never runs, he walks and always catches up somehow. So what were your thoughts when this was going down, man? It's a perfect analogy. The whole time I'm watching this, I thought I was watching another one of my favorite horror movies. I was like, holy crap, like this is this is a slasher movie. This is straight pure horror. Like you put up a comparison to any of the other classic horror films that have come in the past, you know, four decades, this, this scene, this episode could be up there. And even like just this whole episode, just, it is in the top three episodes. I think of live action Star Wars, you know, putting it up there with the book of Boba Fett with, uh, and then Ahsoka and Luke. And then you also mm-hmm. have obviously the end of season two of Mando, this episode's up there. And I think there's going to be episodes to come the to top it, um, in this show. And so, uh, if this is just a taste of what's to come, and man, we are we are so spoiled that we even just get a little teaser, a little taste, like, and it leaves it in such an interesting spot. And I think that one thing, I think the show is doing such a well job is that it is flowing seamless from episode to episode. And while it wasn't necessarily bad in any of the other shows, this just really genuinely feels like it is one continuous movie, one story that if you were to watch it all at once on a Saturday, it would just feel like one long five hour, six hour movie. And like some of the other shows, as good as they've been, they do kind of have a little bit of a kind of like they're putting spare pieces of a car together. This just feels like one complete car and we're riding towards whatever the destination is. And I also really appreciated the fact that they did, they kind of pulled a rebels on us here where they, they mixed that James Earl Jones voice with uh, Hayden's voice mm-hmm. uh, during some of the dialogue, which I thought was really powerful. Um, I think it's very clear that while this was James, James Earl Jones voice, um, that I do think that they used the AI technology that they did for Luke just because of how good it sounded. I'm not saying that he pure. couldn't do yeah. that, but in in Rebels, we saw how uh, that voice has definitely aged. So, Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I, I thought about that. All. Even in Rogue One, you could tell that his That's voice had changed. Yeah. Oh, and Rebels as well, though. You're, you're, you're not wrong. Um, yeah, his voice sounded so pure. You know what I mean? Just smooth as butter. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, it was perfect. And and watching him suit up and talking to, to the third sister, and and it's just just menacing watching him get up. He he has a freaking throne, you know, like he's the king of Mustafar. Like that's that's what this is. And and to see him show up that quickly in this series, um, I mean, the second basically the second Obi Wan leaves Tatooine, Vader's on him. I mean, it's just that quick, you know. And it, to to see this fight was just 
Wow. I shouldn't even call it a fight because it wasn't. To, to basically see this ass whooping that Vader was trying to lay down on Obi-Wan. You know, this was his brother. This is the man that trained him, you know, and, and he's dragging him through flaming coals. You know, it's just the brutality of it showing how far Anakin actually has fallen. And and, and just, wow. I, I just, I, there's there's hardly any words for it. I just, if, if, if you guys go check out Patreon and you watch our reaction video to that episode, you, you, I was, my jaw was on the ground. I just, I couldn't speak. It was just... Like I said, the brutality of it and, and the cinematography behind it that made Vader so so menacing, you know, and it, you actually felt his presence in this show, you know, and, and, and you felt it in Rogue One also, but not like this. Like this was Vader was Vader. He was the boogeyman basically in Rogue One to the rebels. You know, he was the shadow that everybody had heard about and all of a sudden he pops up and they, they die to it. That's basically what it was. I'm not knocking the hallways being scene because holy crap. That was still one of the greatest cinematic scenes ever. But this is way more emotional than what it was in Rogue One with Vader. And this this is focusing more on that relationship between the two, which I, I'm, I'm loving, you know. Um, Nick, you brought up Leia in this episode. And there's, there's a connection that I kind of, I was thinking about. When she, you know... When Obi-Wan's talking about he remembered he had a brother. He remembered a baby, so he thought he had a brother. He remembered flashes of his mom and dad. Um, it kind of explains uh, how Leia could remember flashes of her mother being so young. But when she looks at Obi-Wan and says, are you my real father? Because he was there, too. He was the first person to hold her after she was born. She had memories of him there, too. You know, wondering, are, are you my real father? And it's just gut-wrenching. You know, that, that Leia knows that that's not her real family. And even at that age, at 10 years old, she still wants to know who her real family were. You know, and it's just, she can't know. There's no way she can know, you know, until later. And it's just, it's gut-wrenching. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to point about this episode. Uh, everybody was talking about how Star Wars is for kids. You don't see any dismemberments in the in the uh, sequel trilogy. Or I'm sorry, the sequel films. And, and and Disney doesn't know how lightsabers work. I think they've proven they know how lightsabers work in this series between the first episode and this one. Um, and, and just when <laughs> I, I know it's just a throwaway scene, but the stormtrooper, the stormtrooper, you guys know, rest in peace. You know, that storm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Rest in pieces. That st <laughs> that that stormtrooper. Uh, nobody saw that coming. I thought he was going to bounce off the laser, you know, like Disney Star Wars. You know, in, in in that fashion, and we got the dismemberments, man. We got the hand cut off, you know, and, and we never heard the woman screaming anymore after she got her hand cut off. It was kind of a then then that was done. She passed out. I don't know. We never saw her again. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I, I don't know. No, I, I don't remember. Probably just okay. Out. I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, she, she but screamed very briefly, and then okay, and then and then that was it. Um, yeah, but we but we're seeing that this is not a show for kids. This is this is for the true fans. This th this show is for the fans that have grown up with this series their entire lives and love these characters and want to see what this is going to And it's all going towards what Vader's willing to do. You know what I mean? If the Inquisitors are willing to just take hands of innocent civilians, what's Vader going to do to Obi-Wan? You know, and when he says your pain has just begun, your suffering has just begun, I... I can't wait to see where this is going to go. The next two episodes, I, the big duel, I guarantee the big duel is going to be in the last episode. It's going to be the climax. The next two episodes, I'm really curious to see how they go and how Obi-Wan handles now seeing, because it's just getting worse for Obi-Wan. It's just every episode, his life just gets worse and worse and worse. His life was already crap in the first episode. It became even more crap in the second one when he found out Anakin was still alive. And now it became even more crap now that he sees what Anakin has become and what he's willing to do to him. And now he's running scared. Yeah. No, I can't I can't wait for this series. I'm so, I, I don't want it to end. Neither do I. And um, you know, the, the irony is and I think I posted it earlier, and then our uh, buddy Jay just posted in our chat that uh, supposedly the second season of Obi-Wan has been greenlit. But that's actually not what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is that Rogue One scene. Because mm -hmm. everybody, because I remember where I was. I, I was in the theater, 
you know, uh, I was in the theater, I was watching it with everybody. And when I saw that scene, everybody, you know, should have been like, oh my God, the whole, I was cheering. I was cheering <laughs> for what was going on. I'm pretty sure everybody was cheering when that, you know, because we finally saw it. But now it's six years, five and a half years later. And it's like, okay, we saw that scene, which still gives me goosebumps to this day. But but the, the walk through the town mm-hmm. and what Vader just did. And like, honestly, you know, JG's right. It felt very much like a horror film. It felt very like, like, and as I mentioned before, it, you're watching what's going on through the eyes of Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan is in sheer horror. And the tense, the, the suspense that got built up because of it was just awesome. I, I love what Deborah Chow is doing for this uh, series so far. Yeah, absolutely. And, and JG, you got anything else you want to add about about Vader, where you think we're going to end up going from here? Uh, anything at all? Yeah, I think it's really interesting where we leave Leia more than any of the other characters, more than oh, Obi-Wan, yeah. I think. Because uh, Leia's with uh, the Reva, with the third right. sister. And I think they're going to have some fun conversations, I think. And uh, if there's going to be a turn for Reva, which I don't think there is, uh, Leia is going to be the one to start cracking some of those cracks, though, and start to bring down some of those walls. And maybe that's where we get our flashback is whenever Reva's talking about the temple and everything. And I think, you know, we know how witty Leia is. We know how sassy she is. Like, just those two characters, the conversation is going to be incredible. I know we're all looking forward to, like, how is Obi-Wan going to react and everything. Uh, I'm almost more excited for the Leia and Reva content because I think that's going to be really interesting to see uh how those two you know you know interact and, and where they end up leading you know we obviously know more than likely we're going to get that you know that duel that actual fight of the century that uh, kathy was talking about uh but i'm more curious like how does leia get back home and and where does reva end up like uh more than likely reva's not making it out of this series alive uh unless there's a second series and who knows what they're what they got up their sleeves but uh, I think Leah is a great foil to this character, and uh, I think it's going to be really, really unique seeing a very young, young character interact with a very unstably young character as well. You know, I I don't want this series to end. I absolutely adore this series. This is probably my favorite one out of everything so far, and we're only halfway through it because I wanted that deep character study on Obi Wan. Then, and, and we're getting it, and. The, the fact that they've already greenlit a season two kind of worries me a little bit because I, I, I don't have a problem with limited series. You know, if you have a story to tell, tell the story. You know, it, it kind of goes – it's kind of like the difference between DC and Marvel. Marvel has a story they want to tell, and they just tell the next movie in line that makes the most sense. DC tries to catch up instead of – telling the story they want to tell, you know what I mean? It's, 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 they try to build up to the big fight really quickly and it's don't just, just make the movie that makes the most sense next. You know, you don't have to force something. And, and so don't force a season two just for the sake of money, you know, for once, like for once Lucasfilm, listen to us. I know you're probably not, but listen to us. (laughs) You are finally on the right track with making a plan and sticking to your plan and knowing what it is you want to make. And, and you even put Rogue Squadron on the back burner because it didn't quite match the, the roadmap. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You've got, a, you've got a film for later that you could do as a standalone. That's awesome. Don't force it to, to fit your roadmap. You're doing the right thing there. Don't make a season two of Obi-Wan just because the first one is so damn popular. If there's a story to be told, by all means, tell the story. But don't make... Yeah. Don't make a season two just for the sake of making a season two. Make a season two to tell a story. Make sure there's a story there before you start talking about doing a season two. That's kind of where I'm at now. I've, I've got no problem with a limited run. You know, so I I, I, I hope <laughs> I hope they're not backtracking. I hope they're not, I don't want to say backtracking. I hope it's not like a, a, a one step forward, two steps back thing. I, I really hope. I think it's interesting because you make the parallel with Marvel. Marvel similarly had an, had this where 
WandaVision had come out and, you know, it was super successful, uh, specifically with the character of Agatha. And so we knew that this show was going to be just a one season show um, and it was telling the story that it wanted to tell. But then out of the blue, we get the House of Harkness series, Mm -hmm. which is to follow Agatha. And so it it doesn't have to necessarily be a Kenobi uh, season two. If they want to continue telling the story in maybe a a different show, a different story, then that's that's fine. I think it is something to be, you know, wary of a little bit because it does come off very initially like a cash grab. Um, And that's also like one of the big concerns with like House of Harkness because, you know, Steve and I had talked about how there was no way in heck that this was part of the plan before WandaVision came out. Mm -hmm. Like this was reactionary. And so I hope that similarly to Lucasfilm, I hope that this is reactionary in the good way, in the way that they're respecting the fans that they want more content. And also the actors that want more content and not reacting to getting more money out of our pockets. Right. And, and what worries me is the only Obi-Wan story anybody really wanted was the Vader Obi-Wan rematch. Like that's that's all anybody really cares about with Obi-Wan. What would possibly be the next story that would be a season two for, you know what I mean, to continue something like that, you know, and, 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 and make it live up to what we're getting now. There's nothing. There's no way. Vader's top tier. Like, once you go up against Vader, you're that's it. You know? Yeah. I mean, so... The, they I told I, the whole story, so they can't go down that path. Yeah. So. I, I just... I really hope that they don't do it just for the sake of making a season two. Well, the only reason why I think maybe... And y'all... Maybe they already filmed it, but, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure at Celebration... Uh, Ian McGregor even said, "Hey, you know, I, I really hope you like these, uh, you know, these six episodes, and then seven, eight, nine, and ten. So it sounds yeah. like they had already had these plans. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it, it might shock some people, but I'm going to maybe throw a hypothetical out there. Maybe we don't see the fight this season because Obi Wan is completely." beat up this at at the end of season at the end of the third episode so he has to get healed why you gotta go say something like that he he has to get healed (laughs) i'm sorry it it makes the most sense it makes sense now he has he has to he has to recover and you know what any good tv series does when their main character is in a uh, medically recovering they do nothing but flashbacks and bring back uh so so I'm telling you right now, episode four or five, while Obi-Wan's recovering, you're going to see the flashbacks. And then if we see any guest appearances from everybody's, you know, supposed characters, though, th- that's going to be the episodes that are it. And then episode six, because as JG said, Leia's with the third sister. So Obi-Wan's main focus right now is not with Vader. He has to get Leia back and right. get her back to Alderaan. Right. So there is a very distinct possibility. We may not even see Vader fight. The Vader fight. I'd be, so, I'd be so pissed. I would be Can so you pissed. Imagine the discord? We thought there was discourse like this past week and a half. Oh, my gosh. The internet will burn. Oh, I, my gosh. I'll be so pissed. I, that, <laughs> I'm, I'm, Am I wrong? No, I, wrong. no you're not. There's that, that, that's a very real possibility. That's the strongest possibility. My only thing is thinking is that it seems like this whole season two talk is very reactionary and not like something that's been in the talks. Lucasfilm is a sinking, like not sinking ship, but like a, uh, <laughs> they have a lot of, they have a lot of leaks. That's what I they mean do, yeah. is that they cannot keep information unless it's like Luke Skywalker, apparently. Uh, so I feel like we definitely would have heard some things beforehand. And so I, I just have a very hard time seeing this season and without us getting the duel, it's just it's very hard for me. I could be very wrong, and Nick, you could go to Vegas and oh win millions, uh, bet it on him black oh against my us. God. But I so the whole Ewan McGregor thing. My my first thought was Ewan McGregor wants to keep playing Obi Wan because after this, there's no more Obi Wan. You know that yeah. that he can really do unless they do a season two of this. And I know he wants to continue this, and maybe that was his way of letting everybody know he wants to continue on, you know, and, and maybe I hope you enjoy anything we do in the future. You know, I, I just, I don't know because damn it, Nick, you have a point. I, and I don't like it. 
I, I, you have an absolute <laughs> point. And now I'm scared because <laughs> I'm sitting here expecting in the next three weeks watching the rematch of the century. And now I might have to wait another year and three weeks for it. And now I'm really mad. And now I'm pissed. And it's not even happened yet. I mean, you could be wrong, and I might be pissed for nothing. But I'm pissed <laughs> because that's a possibility. And, you know, honestly, I don't know if I, how I'd feel about that. I don't know if I'd be okay with that or not. I think at first I'd be disappointed because I didn't get to see it, you know, this month. But I think in the long run I'd finally be like, you know what, it's okay. Let's let's build up to something really freaking epic. And I just I don't know. I you just blew my mind with that because I didn't even think of that. I never once considered that it could possibly be, a, you know, holding off for season 2. I I don't know. I I really hope JG's right and that this talk of season 2 is reactionary and I hope honestly, I hope it's not something they rush to get out next year. And I hope it's if, if they do do a season two, I hope it's something they really sit down. This one took three years to get off the ground. He's been signed up for five, you know, to to do this. And it took three years of production to really get it going. Uh, I, and I, as much as I really want more Obi-Wan, if they're going to do a season two, I hope they really sit down and really consider where they want to go with it. And if it's even worth it. And I just I, I hope they don't do it for a cash grab. I just Disney Plus is going to make money no matter what. You don't have to have season two of Obi Wan in order to make it. You know, don't do it just for the hell of it. Do it for the yeah, right reason. Andor. So you have Andor, you have Bad Batch, yeah, you have Ahsoka. Oh so yeah, those are all those are all the uh, series that will uh, bide your time while we're waiting for Obi Wan season two in the match. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Skeleton Crew, I think that's I think that's, oh, yeah. I think that's going to be better than everybody's expecting, to be honest. Yeah. Um, quality over quantity is what we always say. Yes, yes, quality over quantity. I I totally believe in that. Absolutely believe in that. Um, a great example. My my gold standard for video games is the first Last of Us. I absolutely adored the first Last of Us. I can't wait for the HBO series. But that first yes. that first game was actual. That was gold standard as far as I was concerned. That was top tier. Um, and, and when they kept pushing back the second part over and over and over, I was just like, no, damn it. I want it now, now, no, I got to wait another six months. Jesus, a year. <laughs> are you kidding me? Another six months. Screw you guys. And yeah. then finally I got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'd rather them take their time and do it right. And then they didn't. And you know, like, Ooh. I just, Ooh. I wasn't as big a fan of the second one as I was. Okay. So let me, let me use a Skywalker or I'm sorry, a star Wars, uh, example, the Lego Skywalker saga that, that that got pushed back how many times and it ended up paying off in the long run and, and being really, really great. And you can tell it shows in the game that they put all the extra work and love into it. So I'm, I'm hoping they don't do it. Like I said, just for the hell of it, for the money, yeah. do it for so, the right reasons. Speaking of that game, I bought it cause I wanted to play it about time. And then guess who's playing it all the time. Your son. Your son. <laughs> Oh yeah, like I can't. Yeah. I can't even. I can't even finish Halo Five or Halo Infinite. I'm like so far behind on my game. <laughs> he has like completely taken over my gaming system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we wrap up, we've already gone almost two and a half hours on this episode. Uh, oh. Is there anything else you guys want to add about Obi Wan before we wrap up for the for the season? Oh. No, Nick. Uh. For the record, I actually do not think we have to wait a whole year. For <laughs> the I think that that makes me get, feel so much better. I, I think we will get the match of the century come the end of the month. But with all these rumors circulating about a second season of Obi-Wan, that is, it, it's the only reason why. And because, as I mentioned before, I feel like some of the episodes are a little short. Mm -hmm. Not like they're being rushed. They're just a little short where, you know, maybe the second half of the season will be more expansive. But I, I don't see that. You know, yeah. they're between 35, I mean, 39 and 55 minutes. And I think that's where we're going to end up at. Mm -hmm. So... You know, that's kind of why I'm thinking now maybe we might have to wait. But I, the, but the, if, if you're going to ask me percentage-wise, I would say 
65% were going to get the max of the sensory. Oh, God, so, that's lower than I thought you were going to get. still low. <laughs> yeah. God, that's just over half. You know, the lengths of the episode don't bother me because when you finally add them all up, we're getting an Obi-Wan trilogy out of this series. So I, it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. Um, and Because I, I don't look at it as the length of the episode. I look at it as the length of the entire series by the time we're done. And 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 like I said, Quality over quantity. These are awesome episodes. Um, they are, and and I can't wait to see what next week has. I can't. I, I I just holy crap! I can't wait. And what sucks is it's coming out during my harvest season, so I'm gonna go work a 15 hour day, come home, take a shower, want to die, but I'm gonna be like, no, no, I gotta watch Obi Wan on Wednesdays before before I you know pass out and just do it all over again. So, uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. Uh, the villain bracket we were gonna do for this week. Uh, I'm going to hold off. Uh, I think there's two more Bounty Hunter brackets that we're going to end up doing, but Usyk wasn't able to join us tonight. And uh, this, this the villain bracket's kind of his baby. Uh, and I think we need to come up with one more Bounty Hunter to put into it because I think we're at an odd number. Uh, so I'm going to talk to him and get another one added in before we do that. But we'll pick that back up on the Star Wars Canon podcast when we return after my harvest season, uh, which should be about a month, I think. So... Uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll be back with episode 65 whenever that is over. So uh, if there's nothing else to add, uh, let's wrap this episode up. That should do it for this week uh, for the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Don't forget we're here every week talking about our favorite thing in the world on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Uh, be sure to visit 1138productions.com where you can listen in on this show, The Marvel Cast. Th- uh, courtesy of JG right there. Uh, and you can tune in for 1138 Gaming. If you'd like to support us in our content, please check out patreon.com slash 1138productions and show some love there. You'll also gain access to exclusive content there as a thank you for supporting us. All those links can be found in the description of this episode on whatever platform you're listening in on. I want to thank JG for joining us, and I want to thank uh, Nick Albers for, for dropping in as well. Thank you guys for sitting down and talking some Star Wars with us. Always a pleasure to have you guys on. Uh, can't wait to get you guys on again. And hopefully we'll be able to get the whole crew on here before long uh, for one massive episode. I think that'd be an absolute blast to all of us sit around and just do a roundtable thing again. I uh, haven't done that in a while. So, uh, guys, until the next episode, this is Brian and Cruz signing off. Make sure to keep it civil in the comments, uh, and may the Force be with you guys.